a once in a lifetime show. It's absolutely incredible. It will change everything that you believe you know about eclipses. A total solar eclipse turning day into night. The wind picks up, the shadow of a shadow is like racing towards you. People traveling from across the world. We're all converging in Dallas. Cities racing for crowds and major traffic. Once the eclipse occurs and is over, they don't trickle out, they all go at once. And for curious eyes looking up, the last minute preps to keep you safe. Now North Texas, get ready. What seeing totality does is it makes you very aware of your place in the universe. It is the day we have all been waiting for. In just over two and a half hours, we will witness a rare celestial moment in North Texas. We have Texas Sky Ranger up. That is a live picture of Reunion Tower in downtown Dallas. You saw our crew there. They are yes. on top of the tower. Yeah, the guy waving at us for a little bit. That was our meteorologist, uh, Rick Mitchell. I think he has the riskier assignment. Ryan, I am glad that we are on the ground. Welcome from outside Reunion Tower. I'm Brian Curtis. And I'm Deborah Ferguson. We are so glad that you are with us for our special coverage, Lone Star Eclipse. Brian and I are excited to be bringing this with you. Many people working behind the scenes as well. We've got folks here on the lawn also Woo! Give us excited a wave, about guys. this. Yeah, we've got... We've met, We've met some people from Oklahoma, from Florida. Florida. A woman from New York is yes. here, too. I'm like, why didn't you stay there? You can see it. She said, I didn't trust the weather there. <laughs> and the weather, you know, eh, it's a little bit iffy, but we have had some moments yes. here where we have seen the sun. And yes. we've got our glasses ready, so we are holding out hope. And yes. as you can see here, this is a really great setup, folks. Yeah. And we've got plenty of time before totality. Right. So if you want to come down here to Reunion Tower, we've got an open lawn here. We've got food trucks the ground is nice and dry and you get yeah. to you get to watch this action yes. here <laughs> you notice Brian said food trucks there are three <laughs> over there definitely so Brian and I are here on the ground with a lot of people waiting for this moment we also have reporters at NBC5 stationed across North Texas up and down this path of totality with people as they get ready to experience in just two and a half hours a moment Brian that really is once in a lifetime it is once in a lifetime and there you see our team coverage um, one of the places we have folks stationed is in Ennis and a lot of folks have been talking about Ennis because you have the blue bonnets and the yes, total yes. eclipse. That is a <laughs> heck of a combo, right? Exactly. A town of 20,000 swelling to perhaps 200,000. Let's get to our Phil Prazen on the ground there in Ennis where they are watching the eclipse over Ennis. Hi there, Phil. Hey, good morning. Like you said, the city of Venice has spent a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of resources to prepare for this moment. They closed off the roads right in the middle of town. They have a large stage right over to the right. People are beginning to trickle in. And the big question, though, with the talk about the clouds and the severe weather uh, in Texas, just how many people will show up here in Ennis? That's going to be the big question. Around the town, though, of Ennis, you cannot miss the key fact here. The total eclipse will last longer here than many other places in Texas and the enthusiasts were out early. Some came with expensive photography gear to point up and capture the moment. It's not as busy as once expected because of the cloud cover, but people still trickled into the main square throughout the morning. So getting ready for that show between 140 and 144 of total darkness. We met James and Adora Ganishka waiting. They're from Austin and came with a Christian group for a social event here in Ennis and to organize future mission work. They're hoping, hoping the sky clears up in the next few hours. It's to be seen <laughs> on how much of an issue it'll be, but uh, obviously not looking forward to that, hoping maybe things clear up before then. That's you. So check this out, though. You're looking at the sky, and it looks pretty clear at this exact moment. There's been a lot of talk of this, this cloud cover, but it's pretty clear at the moment. And uh, so that has to have some people pretty excited here. People are still walking into the main section of town here, just around to the right. They're going to probably get some food here uh, for lunch at the food trucks. And it should be a pretty good event if the sun stays out and if the if the cloud cover stays away. But we'll send it back to you. We're live in Ennis. Phil Praise at NBC5. Yeah, well, that's what we're all hoping, Phil, is that cloud cover stays away. I'm curious, in Ennis, is it kind of like a holiday, meaning that like offices are closed and school is closed there? 
It is, yeah. Actually, the, um, the, there's a lot of police presence. There's a, a, the post office uh, was open uh, still down the way. But yeah, from what I understand, a lot of places are closed. Businesses are closed if they're not on the main uh, section here. And then uh, the school's closed as well. Yeah, a lot of excitement there. Thank you so much, Phil. We'll be checking back with you through the morning. All right. Well, I know who has the best seat in the house, <laughs> I think anyway, and that is Rick Mitchell. You saw the live picture of him off the top of the newscast from Texas Sky Ranger. He is up there atop the ball at Reunion Tower. Is he 560 feet up there? there is that a, look yeah. at that. What a view. Hey, Rick, how you doing up there? Oh, loving it. I, I tell folks I'm, I'm not at Reunion Tower, I'm on top of it. And I get to be in a place that a, a lot of folks normally don't get to go. This is where they like shoot the fireworks off uh, on New Year's Eve. So this is a wonderful view. Now, granted, it's a little hazy. It's a little murky. We have these low clouds on top of us, okay? They were to be expected. Remember, we talked about this batch of low clouds. The question is, can it thin out as we get closer to the eclipse? And I'm still holding out some hope that we will see these low clouds kind of lift and scatter out just a bit, okay? Maybe not for everybody, maybe not the entire uh, uh, zone of totality, but maybe enough for you and for me to see some of this eclipse. And you can see our uh, satellite picture there representing the uh, cloud cover as seen from our satellites 22,000 miles up in space where you see the kind of the milky white color. Those are low clouds. On top of that, there's going to be some high clouds. So if we get rid of the low clouds, we're still going to have the high clouds to deal with. But that's all right. They're a lot thinner, and I think we'll have our opportunities. It's not a promise. Maybe it's wishful thinking. I don't know. But I do. It's too early to, to punt. It's too early to say it's going to be a bust. Look, I'm optimistic. I got my glasses. My wife got me the glasses. I got to use the glasses. I can see the sun through the clouds just a little bit. I'll tell you one thing that has changed. I got up here about 930. It's 1105 right now. The humidity has increased considerably. That's a surge of moisture coming back in. And that will set the stage for the likelihood of seeing some thunderstorms later on, including some severe weather, but nothing like that during the eclipse, okay? Won't have any rain, but I do want you to be weather aware, and we'll talk about this later on in the show, that thunderstorms, including severe weather, will be a likelihood as we move later into this evening. But for right now, watching uh, our, our Sky 5 out there, we've got uh, uh, beautiful views, just a little hazy, hoping for a little bit more sunshine as we go through the, as we go through, as we go through the morning. Brian, Deborah, back to you. Rick, I'll talk a little bit more about where you're located. I wasn't even aware that there was a place where you could be outside on top of the ball. Oh, okay. So you have to go from the restaurant through a secret door, and then you have to climb up a secret set of stairs, multiple stairs, and have to show the right code, and that will get you out on this, this roof. There's actually a layer that is one level above us, Brian, that, that even is a little bit higher, but we're, we're pretty high, 700 or almost 700 feet. So the view is, is spectacular. We can see I-35. One thing I'm, I'm wanting to see if during totality, when it gets dark, if there'll be a lot of uh, cars just on the road stopping. I hope not, that would be unsafe, but it does feel like there's less traffic today. I think hopefully a lot of people maybe stayed home to enjoy this. And uh, we've got the views. We just got to get rid of a little bit of this haze. We got to think happy thoughts and positivity. Guys, back to you. We're thinking happy thoughts. All right, it's the secret stairs I never knew. <laughs> I All know. right, thanks, Rick. We'll check back with you later. He's, I'm nervous just looking at him. I am afraid of heights, yes. But speaking of the, of the cars on the highways, I don't know if you noticed this driving in. TxDOT has up those signs, you know, uh, stay, leave early, stay, stay put, put, leave late. Yeah, leave I, late. I like the stay put. Yes, exactly. Yeah, just lock it down. There are watch parties all over the place, and one of those is Grapevine. Grapevine knows how to throw a party. So who else would we send there but Maria Guerrero? Uh, a, a resident <laughs> Party girl. That's right. <laughs> Maria Gray in the middle of the action. Yeah. Good morning, Maria. 
Hey there, guys. You know, y'all know very well that Grapevine is known for Christmas, but today it will be the best place. I hope, right? It looks glorious right now, but it will be known for this party that's just getting started. Jeff is going to show you kind of what it's looking like. We are starting to see busloads of people from around the world. Everybody is happy. They're dancing, hearing this music. There's all kinds of events going on from 11 to 3 here on Peace Plaza, of course, at Grapevine Main Station here in the Central Historic District. Let's uh, bring in some folks. So this is a ticketed event, but all through this historic downtown of Grapevine, uh, you will find businesses getting ready, inspired by the eclipse. We have Mr. Dan Weinberger from the iconic, of course, Weinberger's <laughs> Deli. You guys have been here forever. Yes, we and have. What is this? This is called the blackout. This sandwich <laughs> is actually designed. Every element on this sandwich has to do with the eclipse itself. That's right. Every layer. Every layer. The black bread that we have for the umbra. We've got the capicola on here, which is, represents the corona. There's arugula, a little red onion, tomato that represents the earth. Then we've got a smoked turkey. That yellow hue gives it the you know the sun, right? You thought of everything. Everything. Though well, there's there's a little brown mustard, which is the solar flares. You got the black olives, which is a chaos of space. And last but not least, Swiss cheese. There you go. Why? What's the moon made the of? The moon. It's made of Swiss cheese. There you go. I love it. How excited are you on a personal level of this once in a lifetime? event for all of us hopefully for me it will be a once in a lifetime i don't know if i'm going to make it to 2044. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope we all do i, I do hope too. we never know thank you so much Thanks, i Grace. appreciate it you bet. there you go the blackout and then one more drink to wash it down okay jeff we're going to bring in the harvest hall mixologist miss patricia calderon to you know you're getting a little thirsty. What did you make over here? Uh, so we call this the ring of fire. It's a vodka infused with jalapenos. You get a little spicy and sweet just in time for the spring. There you go. It's a little, is it nice and stiff? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you ready for this uh, big event? I am. I'm ready to kick it off and see this once in a lifetime eclipse. Enjoy. I will. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Those are some galactic themed food and drinks that you will find not only here on Peace Plaza at their event, and you can go inside, of course, uh, Harvest Hall, the Grapevine Main Station, but all through this downtown area. Everybody's super excited, especially since we're starting to see the sun. Let's hope that it keeps going, guys. We're going to send it back to you. <laughs> All right, Maria Guerrero, proving that, yes, Grapevine knows how to throw a party, <laughs> living up to that reputation. Yeah, that drink looked awfully good, <laughs> didn't did, it? Yes. Especially in this After stuff. the show, after <laughs> the show. <laughs> All right, you know, there's a lot of science that goes on today. This is, after all, a total solar eclipse, a really rare opportunity to learn about things happening in the heavens. Where better to learn about a total solar eclipse than the Perot Museum? in downtown Dallas. Our Deanna Zoga is there for us today. Hey, Deanna. Hey there, guys. Good morning. Well, yes, here at the Perot Museum of Nature and Science, they have the science part down. The Perot planners here for this party have brought in a couple dozen astronomers from Carnegie Science. So the observatory in Pasadena, California. A lot of those astronomers are, are gonna be uh, walking around. They're gonna be mingling with the crowd. They're gonna be answering some questions about what we expect to see and walking people through this experience of this total eclipse. Uh, I don't know that they're dabbling in meteorology today, so we're definitely watching the clouds, but they certainly will be answering those science questions. I just kind of want to pan over and just show you if we can. Um, folks started lining up at the gates uh, a little over an hour before they even opened at 10 a.m. So I glanced over around 9 a.m. and there was already a line down the block of people who had tickets who are waiting to get in this morning. Uh, one of the first couples in line is a couple from the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area, who traveled here to North Texas just for this eclipse. They said they kind of uh, looked at the path of the totality, looked at the biggest cities along the path, saw DFW and said, oh, we've always wanted to see Dallas. So they, they came by. Uh, they were also a little concerned about the cloudy weather, but I'll tell you guys, um, I've actually experienced a, a total eclipse in 2017. My family traveled to Missouri, where my husband's from, and 
I do remember that was a cloudy day, but it didn't ruin the day. It was still a really cool experience. We could still kind of see the, the weather changing, the temperature drop a few degrees, things got dark. It was really cool to see and experience. So I personally am not sweating the clouds too much. I still think it's going to be a really, really fun day. Uh, a little bit later here in this broadcast, we are bringing in some of those uh, astronomers that I told you about. Uh, let's bring on some PhDs to explain this to us and uh, talk a little bit about what you can expect if you are watching this eclipse at home. Back to you guys. <laughs> All right, thank you for that teaser, Deanna, because that's a good reminder that clouds are not, this is still going right. to be an amazing event to share. Right, and she talked about the size. Great, Justin, our morning meteorologist who is ill and couldn't be with us. We've had, we'd have discussions about the science. He said, great, help me understand this. Help me understand this. He said, Deborah, it's very simple. The total solar eclipse means the moon is going to move in between the sun and the earth and it's going to get dark. It's so simplified. Yeah, yeah, I heard some scientists say it's one thing moving in front of another. Yes. And I'm like, okay, got it. Well, speaking of things that are moving, definitely there are lots of flights, of course, right here out right. of Dallas, Fort Worth, the DFW Airport in Dallas Love Field. Our Candace Sweat is at Love Field right now, who may have gotten the plum the assignment oh, of the day, that? and that is being on board a Southwest Airlines jet flying along that path of totality. Candace, tell us more about this adventure. Yeah, no, this is really, really exciting. We're here at Love Field, going to be on this Southwest flight. Brian, I heard you say that Rick probably has the best seat in the house. I don't know about that. I think that um, I could certainly compete for that with us going up some 35,000 feet above the ground. This is truly a once in a lifetime experience. People are purchasing tickets or have purchased tickets for this flight to Pittsburgh specifically to see uh, this eclipse and to travel the path of the eclipse. I want to talk briefly uh, with Southwest Representative Julia Melly. This is really exciting about how many people are going to be on this flight today. There's about 150 people on this flight today and we're all just so excited. We're calling it a celebration. Celebration, I love it. Any bad seats in the house, so to speak, right? Or yeah, no, it's Southwest Airlines. So every seat's a great seat in the house. And we'll have to see how it goes, but um, we're hoping everyone gets a great view today. Yeah, thank you so much. You know, I was speaking to another pilot who says he's really, really confident that we are actually going to get some very cool, very unique, again, once in a lifetime views from, again, 30 to 35,000 feet above the ground. We're going to follow the path over Indianapolis, St. Louis, then, of course, land in Pittsburgh. In fact, I spoke with the gentleman over here to my left, your right. He flew in from Pittsburgh, touched down in Dallas, and he's getting right back on the flight to go back to Pittsburgh again, just to see this this eclipse. So folks really, really excited about this. Going to have some pictures from above the ground. Going to have, you know, all these stories from inside of the plane. We are incredibly, incredibly excited out here at Love Field. Back to you. All right, she may. Thank you so much, Candace. She may be the one who gets the best pictures of all of us. I'm above excited the for her. Yes, right. Yes. Our coverage is just beginning. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everyone, to our live coverage of Lone Star Eclipse. Brian Curtis and Deborah Ferguson here out on the lawn of the Reunion Tower. And, and I think the crowd is starting to come. Yes. Tol totality doesn't hit until 140, so there is a little bit of time for you to get down here. Do it sooner because that's all the talk is. You want to come early, stay put, and then leave late. And so far, the traffic does not seem to be too bad. So if you want to come down here, don't let that deter you. Right. Remember, DART is also an option. This it's, is true. It's right there. Take it right down here and, and join us. I want to draw your attention to the corner of your screen. You can see uh -huh. down there we have a small picture there of the sun. That is what the sun looks like right now. And we're, we're holding out hope here because even though we have some cloud cover, occasionally we have gotten yes. some breaks yes. here in the clouds. So and, and if I think we get lucky... We're going to see it. And I think every time we do, Brian and I put on glasses. Okay, what do we see? What do we see? So Brian and I are here on the ta on the lot of Reunion Tower. We have crews scattered across North Texas. We want to head now to the Cotton Bowl. Well, Al Noel Walker is with thousands and thousands of people here for this historic event. Hi, Noel. Hi, Deborah. Yeah, when we got here at uh, uh, oh dark 30 this morning, there was nobody but us. Well, very few people but us. And it was dark. Now we have been joined by a few of our uh, now closest friends and more still coming as we are still a bit away from even the partial eclipse part of this. But I am joined right now by some of my friends. Come on in here. This is Tristan Kojo and this is Ariana Lucky, which is a great last name. Both of you from St. Anthony Academy. You're a teacher. You are a student. How? What grade are you in? Four. So what kind of work did you have to do to be able to come here for this day outside for school? So I had to study about the eclipse and learn about it. What was it that you wanted them to experience by bringing them out here for it as opposed to just stepping out in the classroom? Just experiencing this once in a lifetime thing. So just to be able to actually see the moon cover the cover the sun so that way we're able to see the shadows and whatnot and the energy and the, the neurons and stuff all around on the outside so just experience it all as well with their classmates and just having a good time too just experiencing this once in a lifetime thing and we might not ever see it again but just uh, making sure that they are knowing that this is important this is special and being able to be a part of it is it's just awesome have you grasped that yet? Just like how lucky you are to be in the position that you're in, in terms of like where you where you live, that the sun is, that it's happening over us. Yes, I feel very lucky. <laughs> so I have to tell you that we have cloud cover here and every time the sun comes out, I hear cheers coming up over here. What is, what, how is that helping? It's, it's making me feel proud because I get to see the eclipse for the first time in my life. Have you seen a partial one before? No. No. So this is the first time ever? Yes. So what is it you want them then to take away from this experience? If it, for some of them, like Ariana, it's, it's the first time ever. Just being grateful that we're actually be that we're actually able to physically be here in person and see it. And it's taking away that science is never ending and, and just to be able to explore new things and just kind of bring new journey to them and experience things that they've never done before and kind of learn like, hey, science is actually cool and you can study it just, it's just as much as these people have and it can be fun. It's not always just bam, 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 but it can be entertaining. So just to take away just a little bit, that's all. And a little knowledge for what they're learning from here too and all the speakers. Thank you both for joining me. Enjoy your eclipse. <laughs> Thank you. We, we ran into another teacher across the way. You'll see her in a little bit probably. Um, but uh, she played uh, hooky today from school because she is a big Neil deGrasse Tyson fan, fan girl, I would go so far as to say. So he is supposed to be speaking here today, too. So we're waiting for that, as well as the eclipse and all the other stuff they have planned here at the Cotton Bowl. Reporting live at the Cotton Bowl, Noel Walker, NBC5. All right, Noel Walker, thank you so much. And I love that. No telling, you know, what the future will be like for some of these kids experiencing this today. I know. You know, just set off new careers and new ideas and their imagination can take them anywhere. Spark that passion yeah. for science. Yes. What a nice crowd they have there at a the Cotton Bowl. That's yeah. really great to see. Let's go back up to the top of Reunion Tower. That is where we have our chief meteorologist, Rick Mitchell, stationed for this celestial showstopper. How's it going up there, Rick? 
You know, it's, it's like an emotional roller coaster, guys. We all we see the we see the sun peek out and we're happy and we know that it's going to go back in the clouds. But I, I've, I've looked at uh, some of our satellites uh, sites that I go to that show the satellite view and it does show that the, the low clouds are, are thinning a bit, especially to our south. So given that we still have more than two hours to go, I'm cautiously optimistic that we will see some some sunshine. I'm hoping, but as you can see, uh, as we look out over downtown Dallas, it's still pretty murky. Uh, the humidity has increased considerably, so there's a certain amount of haze in the air just because uh, the, uh, the atmosphere is very humid. But if we could get those clouds to go away, I don't think that haze is going to cause us any problems. Uh, one thing I wanted to address, I got an email from someone uh, uh, yesterday that said, hey, I haven't seen the moon where is it well the moon is in a phase called the new moon all right and you can't see a new moon that's one of the reasons why this eclipse is possible because it has to be in that new moon phase and that's why you wouldn't see it moving across the sky because it's in the new moon phase think of it it's it's kind of invisible to us so we will certainly experience uh, the shadow that it creates and there there we go Little sun. Can I see my shadow? Hello, shadow. See? Emotional roller coaster. Sun peaks out. Now it's gone again. This is going to be an exhausting two hours emotionally. But uh, we hold out hope that these clouds will thin a little bit more. No promises, no guarantees. Hopefully it's, no, uh, it's not just wishful thinking. But from the meteorological standpoint, there is the potential we could uh, end up seeing thinner clouds. And keep in mind, the high humidity that you feel will lead to thunderstorms later today. Let's not lose sight that we could have a fairly active severe weather pattern coming up, but that will be after the eclipse. Uh, Brian, Deborah, holding out hope, <laughs> fingers and toes crossed at this point. Yeah, we're, we're riding we're that riding emotion. Coaster, yeah. <laughs> yes. Every time the sun comes up, we're like, oh, oh. And we got these people behind me saying, it's up, it's up. We hear a big oh, cheer go up I every know. time the oh, sun peaks through the clouds. There's been so much pressure on the meteorologists. I, yes. I feel so bad for those guys. Yeah, but and, it is and the whatever it's going to be. And the sun, too. Live like they're at Clyde Warren Park as folks start to gather in another party. And one of many parties in North Texas going on to watch the Lone Star Eclipse. The countdown is on. Our coverage will continue in just a moment. Welcome back everyone to our Lone Star Eclipse special coverage. Look at this, a live <laughs> right? picture 
of the sun. Yes. This is what we've been seeing all morning. Occasionally we do get peaks of the sun. A big cheer goes up outside Reunion here. Brian Curtis alongside Deborah Ferguson. We are right outside Reunion Tower in downtown Dallas. It's a really great vantage point. So if you have time, come on down and yeah. see us. It's a festive atmosphere. The crowd is slowly growing, but it's a beautiful open area. The ground is dry. There are food trucks. That's so important. We're getting the party started here. <laughs> yes, we are. And we are glad to be here with you. And thank you for letting us share this moment yes. with you. We know you're going to get outside around 140. And when you do, make sure you have these solar eclipse glasses. Very, very important. So Brian and I are here. We have crews on the road, not just in Texas. Right. Yeah, but to the north, too, in Arkansas. That's where Alicia Bernetta has made her way to Louisville, just one of the stops on this path of totality. Alicia, tell us more about what you're seeing there in Russellville. Hey, Deanna Zoga here, live in downtown Dallas at the Perot Museum of Nature and Science with someone you might recognize. The Today Show's Al Roker. Hey, how are you? Just, just grooving on some of the tunes here. Yeah. Good to little, see you. Little Eclipse tune. Go. It is good to be seen. I tell you, this is a, this is a party here. I guess this is the parking lot for the. Uh, the Perot uh, Museum of Science and uh, Nature. This is, is really extravagant. We were talking a little bit about the weather, and you're still holding out hope that, sure. that we're going to It's, it's better. better than it was this morning during the Today Show, so uh, I, I, I'm holding out great hope. I uh, uh, Back in 2017, I was on the deck of the USS Yorktown, and we had lightning and thunder all around us, and just as it started, things started to open up. So. Uh, I have I have great faith. I'm not sure I'm going to get out tonight to get back home because of the storms that are coming. But that said, I'm very excited. Having experienced that that total eclipse before in 2017, what should people at home expect? Um, what should we be thinking about when we're outside with our glasses on, of course, looking up? Well, I really do think it's one of those moments that you know we're not looking on our phones, we're not scrolling, we're all looking up and. It's, it's it's just one of these miracles of nature, you know, and realize there's something bigger than us and that we can all take part in a communal sense. Uh, things get quiet. You, uh, if you look down, you'll notice that shadows get sharper. Uh, things quiet down. The birds will start stop chirping. You're going to feel the temperature drop. Uh, it's it, you know, Humidity level may rise a little bit wind drops uh it's 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 very it's 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 eerie yet it's 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 this your your senses are heightened one thing I've, I've i've heard from people is that it goes back to just you know evolution our ancestors at some point didn't know what was happening when right. there was a solar eclipse so yeah. something inside of us makes yeah. us pay attention well look it's something that we have no control over yet it's benign you know i mean so many natural things, natural forces, whether it's hurricanes, tornadoes, rainstorms, snowstorms, whatever, we have no control over. And, you know, they can leave us pretty well rocked. But this is something that keeps you just grounded. And you feel like, wow, I just, I was part of something. And everybody will talk about, you know, the kids, everybody will talk about, I, I saw this, I was part of this. Speaking of kids, we're seeing a lot of families, a lot of folks coming through the gates. They're expecting, I don't know, 7,000 people yeah, in this parking lot to watch together. Yeah, and that's kind of cool. I mean, downtown uh, Dallas, I think they're expecting, like, what, 400,000 people? Uh, and and look, eclipses eclipses are good for business. Your your, your camera person, go ahead, go wrap it. I, I wasn't sure what you're doing. Water wrap you. Or, or there's a chopper ahead. There's been choppers overhead the whole time. Anyway, it's going to be great, and uh, just enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. You heard it from Al Roker. Rain, shine, clouds. Come on, D, let's go. Come Enjoy on. it today. It back up. to you. We're wrapping it up. Nothing to see here. Go back to your own. Bye, guys. <laughs> Al Roker, never one to lose words. I enjoyed having him with Al us today. Has what faith. a big deal. Yeah, he does. He does. We have it too. All right. Well, we have crews everywhere. And one reason we have crews everywhere is we want to make sure we are able to bring you the best pictures possible right. when we are in totality. So we went about 350 miles up the road to Russellville, Arkansas. That is where Alicia Barrera is stationed for us today. Hey, Alicia, how's it going up there? Hey, 
it's going well you guys we're over here in arkansas i was telling you earlier super sunny absolutely beautiful we're getting closer to the uh middle of the Maine on the moon over Maine is the event here in Russellville, Arkansas. And what you're seeing is a lot of people having picnics out here. It was pretty slow this morning. It was so, so cold um, in the 40s, but now we've made it to mid 70s. It's supposed to reach 83 degrees. And right now, this line that you're seeing are folks trying to get in line to um, see the folks over at NASA. But it's been an absolutely beautiful event so far. People super excited, um, everyone in good spirits because here it is just clear skies and it is sunny. So we are so blessed to be able to be in the path of totality over here. Uh, four minutes, 11 seconds is what we will be able to experience today here in Russellville, Arkansas. Back to you guys. Alicia, we're looking at that picture of the blue sky, and I've got to tell you, we're a little bit jealous. Yes. I want to ask you, are you excited? You have to be getting a little bit uh, amped up there. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Let me show off what I have over here. I am, of course, so I am from a cell phone, so it's a little different for me today, but I'm so excited and prepared. Let me show, y'all have been showing off your glasses, so I will do the same. I have these awesome, like, typical Ray-Bans, but these are actually safe for the eclipse, so right now I see absolutely black, nothing. So we have been very pumped. Um, this was an almost five hour drive to make it over here and it is such an experience to be able to be with this crowd here. I was mentioning earlier, 90,000 people were expected. It's looking like a little less, but just down the street from here, they have another event that's also making headlines because you have more than 300 couples getting, re getting ready to get married, tie the knot right when we hit totality of the four minutes and 11 seconds. So it is just a beautiful, exciting day over here in Russellville, Arkansas. Well, that is fantastic. We'll be checking back with you throughout the morning. And those are some fantastic shades you have there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at our little paper, our little cardboard ones. I'm it, glad it, we it have feels them. so inadequate, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, but of course, oh, Alicia oh. wouldn't be the fashionable exactly. one out there, definitely. So let's bring it back to our coverage here in Dallas with the city of Dallas throwing lots of different events. I mean, right here in just this area, we have the Lana Reunion, we have Clyde Warden Park, we also have the Perot Museum and different little spots. But the city is pretty proud of something that it pulled together at Samuel Farms in Mesquite. This was run by the city of Dallas Park and Recreation. And they started the party a few days ago when people could camp out. Our Lana Quillen has been with this group throughout the day and joins us now with more there from the Samuel Farms in Mesquite. How's it going, Alana? Hi. Yes, you know, a lot of people are getting uh, free glasses when they walk through the doors here and they're already putting them on to try to check the sun out. And that's what I've been doing periodically to try to see what I can see. Nothing yet so far, so a little too early to put those on, but there's so much going on out here. It's truly really a party. We've got crafts. We've got bounce houses for kids. We've got a DJ. There's just so much to do out here. Food trucks, food tents. We've even got some archery fishing and some other fun stuff going on. But I want you to take a look at this beautiful sunrise out here this morning. A lot of the people got to wake up to this this morning. This is a whole nother set of people who are here. They've been camping here since Saturday morning. Dallas Park and Rec officials set up the tents, the cots and the grills and the campers just showed up with the rest. Now we caught up with several of those campers cooking up breakfast before the big eclipse. We met some people from California, from Boston. One woman even flew in all the way from Sydney, Australia. You'll hear from her in the next hour, but a lot of these folks have just seen at least one eclipse before. For others, it's their first time ever, ever, and well worth the trip to Texas. We even met a group of astronomer friends from out of state who chose these campgrounds here in Dallas to witness this special moment. It's great being amongst people who are all going to experience this this short but very, you know, a very incredible event because even if you can't see it in the sky still you know everything going dark and stuff is it's just something that you can't really explain and that's why we brought our friends with us because i i feel like if anyone's not seeing it they're really missing out you know so yeah we're really excited for it 
Now, after the eclipse, of course, we've talked about this big concern is weather. The good news is that camping here closes at 5 p.m. today, so there won't be any overnight camping here during that forecast for storms. The hope is that most of the campers clear out by the time the storms arrive. Park and Rec officials, they told me they've been keeping in touch with the National Weather Service in case they need to ramp things up, getting people out of here if those storms fire up early. But again, they have to clear out of here by 5 p.m., so they should be okay. Now, Samuel Farm is expecting a lot more people to come out here. About 4,000 people total to watch the eclipse from this location. Again, you get some free eclipse sunglasses whenever you come through here. It's $5 to get in, and they're taking people still at the gate as we speak. So we'll be out here. We'll be watching all of the fun, and I'll be talking to that lady from Australia in the next hour. Back to you guys. All right, Alana, thank you. Very good point about keeping people aware of the weather. I mean, those of us who are from here, we know about spring storms. Right. The out-of-towners may not be so familiar, of course, so we need to make sure they are safe. What time is it, Brian? It is 11.40. <laughs> you know what that means? Uh, two hours? Just two <laughs> hours from totality. Not that we're counting or but anything. But we are, yes. But we are, right? Um, you know who has a cool spot is our Larry Collins. Uh -huh. He is in Arlington at the University of Texas at Arlington because they're having something called a Solaration. Very clever. <laughs> hey, Larry, what's going on there? Hey, good morning, guys. Happy Eclipse Day to you, Deborah and Brian. It is, you know, the perfect place to be. We're right outside of the planetarium, and I have got the director of the planetarium here with us. Good morning. It's a big morning here for the, the campus of UTA. We're seeing the students start to get out and about. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about the excitement that surrounds a day like this, not just for the planetarium, but for mm -hmm. the entire campus. Sure. This is something we have been waiting for a long time mm -hmm. and preparing for a long time because the total solar eclipses are big, big deals, uh, and it is visible. We are on the totality path, so it's going to go across our campus. Uh, it's, a, it's a great celebration. I cannot just speak more about that. So I know that there are scientists who will be studying this eclipse very closely before, during, and after, and it's a lot of the atmosphere. Tell me, what are they looking at, and why are, is an eclipse the perfect time to look at this? Uh, there is one thing that is not uh, normally visible is the, the, the gas layer mm -hmm. around the sun. It's called corona. Uh, just like our uh, atmosphere, the, the sun also has a gassy layer around it. Uh, and that layer is important because the, um, uh, that gas layer produces a lot of uh, plasma particles because of its temperature. And those plasma particles are actually interesting for us because uh, the, the, sometimes uh, they can damage our satellites, and those are the ones actually causing uh, northern lights, if you know, some people are traveling to see northern lights. So this is something we continuously monitor, just like the, the weather forecast, we also have space weather forecasts. Uh, so the predictions the, the, and the models based mm -hmm. on these forecasts are completely based on this gassy layer. So, but studying that gas layer is not really easy because we cannot see the sunlight is so dominant when ah. we look at the sun, uh, whatever filter we use, uh, still it's not allowing us to get detailed images uh, and data from that, uh, the, the gas layer. So total solar eclipse is a perfect opportunity for this. I appreciate you stopping in and tell us about that. You know, so beyond the spectacle and all the fun involved with this, there's some science that's going to help us out along the line. They're canceling classes starting at one o'clock mm -hmm. today. So we're going to see this plaza fill up with students. They're all, as they're walking to class right now, of course, with glasses in hands, looking at the sun, watching the clouds roll in and out, hoping that by the time the totality comes our way, we have a nice clear sky. <laughs> Back to you guys. All right, happy Eclipse Day to you as well, Larry. We'll check back with you later in the day. So we have seen a celebration. We've been to <laughs> Eclipse over Ennis. There was the party in Grapevine. We have much more still ahead on Lone Star Eclipse. If you're wherever you are, send us some pictures too. Yes. Yes, hashtag NBC5 Eclipse. We would love to see what you're seeing. We're going to take a quick break and our coverage will continue in a moment.
Okay, yeah, because you're not going to see anything yet. So. Welcome back, everyone, to our special Lone Star Eclipse coverage, 1146, less than two hours to totality. This is a live picture from Frisco. This is Rough Riders Field. You can see people gathering there, families just playing. What a great occasion to just kind of get together yeah. and have sort of a communal experience. We're seeing scenes like this all over North Texas and all along the path of totality, just people gathering and having a great time. And I think what's cool, Brian, is in many of the instances, it's families. Right. You know, moms, dad, may maybe they didn't have to go to work today, or maybe they say, no, I'm skipping work, but they wanted to enjoy it together. So that's the outdoors, right. Fisker Rough Riders. One of the other places that we want to take you to is the Botanic Garden in Fort Worth. They are saying, immerse yourself in nature as the moon dances across oh, the sun. What a beautiful spot. I love right? that. And they're in that beautiful spot. Is there Tahara Rachman with our live coverage. Tahara, good to see you. What's the plan there, Botanic Gardens? Good morning, guys. It has been a wonderful, glorious morning. We've been getting some good extended windows of sun when we're hoping it stays that way. Let me show you what we're working with. We have food trucks in the back and we also have games of cornhole going on. So we're just vibing here. There are families out here and there are also folks who came out solo people with their telescopes set up, cameras, their Eclipse t-shirts, and we also saw some Bucky snacks. You can't forget that if you have totality in Texas. We've also already talked to visitors here from coast to coast, Oakland, California, Brooklyn, New York, and of course, everybody keeping an eye on the clouds right now, hoping that this sun stays in place to get that full total eclipse effect, to see that corona, but some have made peace with the chance they might not be able to see all of that in totality. And they say, you know what? They're gonna be happy for the experience anyway. I'm a little worried, but I'm, I won't be devastated. I think we'll get at least some, some part, part of the experience. I will not be disappointed. It's just the experience of being here and participating. Now there's also some really cool nature observations that are gonna be happening here, guys. So they have teamed up here at the Botanic Gardens with NASA and they've placed some sensors across the gardens so that they can monitor how plants and possibly even animals react, if at all, when totality happens. So they're gonna be looking at the goats, they're gonna be looking at the monarch butterflies and the plants here. So that'll be really interesting to see what comes out of that too. Back to you guys. Yeah, that is true, Tata. We have heard that, that in, the, in those moments of darkness, that plants will fold, flowers will fold up, that the crickets will start chirping again. <laughs> so just some unusual sights and sounds. I'm curious if you know anything about this, Tata. I thought I saw somewhere there about the Fort Worth Botanic Garden that they were working with Lighthouse for the Blind in order to help visually impaired hear the eclipse as it happens. Yes, they are doing that. And that's such an awesome experience. So what they're doing is they have these sound machines. And as I understand it, as the sun goes into partial phase or the eclipse goes into partial phase, they'll be playing notes and the notes get lower as totality happens. So people who experience blindness can experience the eclipse through sound. Okay, Tahara Rachman there at the Fort Worth Botanic Garden. Thank you so much, Tahara. And look who has joined us. <laughs> I was out on the lawn, now Samantha I'm back over here. <laughs> Davies, just think, after today, no one will ask you again, what's the forecast going to be? What's the forecast going to yeah. be for the eclipse? I mean, it's no still going to be pretty active. I'm sure they're going to ask. But also something that people have been asking us about is if you haven't gotten your glasses, can you still view the eclipse? Because we know that it's not safe to look at it. The only time you can look at it directly is during totality. So that's for about four minutes. <laughs> Big cheer going Hold on, on let's here. see what's going because on. The sun has, <laughs> sun has uh, yes, found the here. sun is out. <laughs> you can see it you through the glasses. It, yeah. I left mine these. back there. Here, um, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but when the eclipse is not happening, you're not gonna see much through the DIY viewers. Um, but if you're home and you haven't gotten your glasses and you haven't had a chance, you can't, it's too late to order them sure. online. You just take a simple box and you cut a little square hole in the front, square hole in the side. You take a piece of tin foil, you put it on top of it, and then you take a pin and you pop a little hole in it. Okay. And then put a white piece of paper in here and that's going to act as a projector and you'll actually be able to watch the eclipse through this viewer. So it's really easy, Deborah. You'll just put the pin 
at the sky uh -huh. and look in here, but look back towards the ah, white. I see. Ah, okay. So yes. that's one thing Thank that you, you can do. <laughs> yeah. And then another thing is kind of similar to the pinhole viewer is take a colander. Mm -hmm. And when you point it up, the image will be projected. Like, do you, you can kind of see the shadow here right. on this table. Right. You'll be able to see the image of a, the eclipse as it's happening. So that's a couple of things you can do. Or if the kids are home from school, it's just another way to incorporate science into your day of watching the eclipse. So it's pretty cool. I, I like the colander idea. It, it, I'm you know why I like it? Have that. Because it's super easy. <laughs> right. Something you right. already have at right. home in your kitchen. Right. I know. I had to think about the box thing. Now, where, where, which one do I look at? Uh, yeah. But Samantha, I mean, you. You, you are a scientist, so how as exciting is this for you to be part of this today? It is really cool. I'm excited to see what happens during totality. And I will tell you right now, yes, the sun is coming out. We're seeing breaks in the clouds. It's humid because we have those storms in the forecast. It's also starting to get hot. When totality happens, we're going to lose that heat from the sun and we're going to see a temperature drop. It's going to be about 10 degrees. That's what it was in 2017 in Carbondale, Illinois during totality. So we'll probably see something similar here. So to experience it going from sun to nighttime yeah. and then seeing that temperature drop and hearing the surroundings, I think it's going to be pretty cool. This is the most I've... sun that we've had it's in the beautiful. past couple of hours yes. right MPSA, now. MPSA, for anyone heading out, I put my sunscreen on. Make sure you do that as well because we're all going to be out here for a few hours. Smith always tells us that every morning, Brian, in the clouds, still put your sunscreen right. on because yes. the rays the can come cover. through. Okay. Yeah. All right, Samantha, thank you for the tips. Tip. Yeah, yeah we'll like be that. checking back yeah. with you throughout the day. All right, um, we've been talking a lot about animals and how animals yes. might react with yes. this, this sudden nightfall. I'm thinking my animals are going to think that it's dinner time. <laughs> All four dogs are going to be like, okay, Dad, come on. Time, <laughs> yes, to time to, for the feed. Yeah. Yes, well, we may hear the crickets that have been out here on the lawn earlier this morning. Right. But another sweet spot to be is at the Dallas Zoo right. to find out what will be happening with the animals. And our Vince Sims has that assignment for us today. And sure I'm sure there's lots of interest there at the zoo, Vince. Yes, I hope I'm looking at the camera because I can't see it, but if the eclipse was happening right now, it would be perfect. Where we are, the sun is out and I'm using my glasses looking up at it. I can see the sun perfectly if only the eclipse was happening now. So we're going to remain hopeful that it stays this way. But yes, we are at the Dallas Zoo and we are set up here in front of the flamingo exhibit. And the flamingos are what we're going to be watching, hoping that we get some activity, some action. We'll see. We'll keep an eye on them. Now, they say the early bird gets the worm. Ha ha, flamingos. Well, we actually made it out here at 630 this morning. We just weren't sure about the crowds, the lines getting in for parking. So we made it very early to beat the crowds. And we did do that. Take a look at this video. You'll see what we're talking about, because once those gates opened up at nine o'clock. People were lined up waiting to get in and there were a crowd of people filing in. They were wearing there's groups that are wearing matching shirts. There's families. There's international travelers here. I actually spoke with one guy who came all the way here from London. So the zoo is making sure that all the people and guests for today have stuff to do while they are here. There's going to be activities in two of the zones, the Wonders of the Wild and the Kids Zoo area. They're going to have activities going on through that area. They also have educators roaming through the zoo that are talking with guests, just giving them information and educating them about what will be happening out here. And also, I don't know if Derek, you can see there's, there's gorgeous outfits too. There's a lot of Eclipse t-shirts. This little young girl behind us here, she's got all the stars and moons and planets on the back of her dress there. We've seen a couple of dresses that are celestial in design. So people are just really taking this in and having a great time with this. But as we were saying, we're here at the Flamingos because we want to see what the animals are going to do. So who better to ask about what the animals might do than somebody who is associated with the zoo. So we're going to bring in Ann Nutson, who is here. She's a zoological manager here at the Dallas Zoo. Thanks so much for being with us. Yeah, thanks for joining me here today. Oh, we're excited to be here, excited to see what may happen. What do you think, what can we maybe expect from the flamingos as the eclipse takes place? Yeah, so the flamingos are uh, very vocal right now anyways. They just started their breeding season, so they're out here flagging and showing off a lot. But I think that they'll pick it up a little bit more because that's how they communicate with each other and kind of keep tabs on each other. But they like to sleep in the water. So I think as it gets darker, that's usually, usually their cue to move kind of to their sleeping spot. So they'll probably move into the water and they'll be in a group and they'll kind of settle down. Once it's dark, they'll, they'll probably be pretty silent. Okay. And then once the sun comes back out and it gets light, they'll start talking again and kind All of right. going about their way. And thank you so much. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll be watching it throughout the day to see exactly what happens and we'll update you a little bit later. I'm live at the zoo, now back to you. 
Okay, Ben Sims, thank you. And speaking of updates, let's update you right now on how close we are to totality. We have had the countdown clock running for probably, what, a month now, Brian, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, at least. <laughs> yeah, so I think we are under two hours at this point, if I am. Yes, we're under two, yes, under two hours. It's yeah. getting closer. And, and I want to show you a live picture of the sun. Do we have that shot there? Okay, well, there's, there's the clock, uh -huh. one hour, 33 minutes. But we want to show you the sun because we pretty much have full sun here in downtown Dallas and we're some high clouds that that's why it looks a clouds. little yeah. Samantha Davies still here with us Samantha if we can hang on to this talk to us a little bit more about what we will see in totality yeah well the cool thing is when you're looking at this shot of the sun you're going to see the moon obviously which is another circle move in front of it now the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon but the moon is 400 times away from the sun right now. So that's gonna make them appear the same size and that's why the moon is going to cover the sun. But what's interesting is you're going to see the outer rim of the sun and we're in a very active solar cycle right now, meaning like little solar flares are coming up. So when you're looking at the perimeter, the outermost edge of the sun, you might see little spikes or swirls coming out. That would be a little solar flare. So that's kind of something interesting cool. to look for. There may be a little bit of a diamond shape as well. That's what I'm looking for. I've seen videos where people screaming, the diamond, diamond ring! ring. Yeah. Diamond <laughs> ring. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Yeah, so you'll be able to see that during okay. that totality. All right, I want you right here with me when it happens. <laughs> All right, our coverage of Lone Star Clips will continue in a moment. totality a rare total solar eclipse is racing toward dfw some of them said it was the best thing that they'd ever experienced in their life millions will pause together it will be an experience here to watch the shadow of the moon move across the region from north texas and beyond we are bringing you the phenomenon live And we are live with you on this Monday afternoon, bringing you coverage of the Lone Star Eclipse. That is a beautiful shot of the sun. You see the clouds moving through, but we like what we're seeing right now, Brian, because it hasn't been that way all morning. It's I been know. hit and miss. And if you look really closely at that live picture of the sun, you can actually see a sunspot right there in the middle and that's because we have special filters on our cameras really cool stuff definitely so yes and we ha also have our solar eclipse classes so that we can take a glimpse <laughs> to see up there and it looks beautiful and it looks bright thank you everybody for being with us on this historic day in north texas april 8th 2024 the date 
that history will be made I as know. we see this total solar eclipse, Brian. We will probably never experience this again no. in, in our lifetime, <laughs> no. right? No. Um, we are out here on the lawn at Reunion Tower. It's a really beautiful spot. The crowd is starting to build here. You've got time to get on mm -hmm. down here because totality isn't until 1.40, but it is noon right now. Yes. The eclipse actually begins in about 20 right. minutes. So in about 20 minutes, we should start to see the light level diminish down here. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, maybe start to have that temperature drop a little bit. It is, uh, it has gotten humid out here through yeah. the morning and there's a meaning to that. There's a meaning that moisture right. that we're feeling means something pretty potentially risky could come later in the day. Our meteorologist district Mitchell is not on the ground with us. Nope. He's at 560 feet or so at the top of the reunion tower, way up on that ball closer to the clouds than we are, Rick. <laughs> and we're trying to scatter those clouds out. We can we can see the sun from time to time when it peeks through. What you hear on the roof here is this. It's like, woo! Not everybody does that. I do it, but I'm excited for it. And in addition to that, you've got plenty of blue skies as well out here. We're starting to see so much. In fact, my wife just texted me. She said, don't get sunburned. So there's enough sun that she's concerned that I will get sunburned, but lots of blue. Let's go to the edge here, all the way to the edge. So we go over the edge. No, we won't go over the edge, but you can see down to uh, uh, Dealey Plaza down there, there are a, a smattering of folks gathering. And I suspect as we get closer to the actual eclipse that people uh, that are in downtown office buildings and stuff will start uh, filtering outside. But it's kind of happening. The hopeful thing that we were clinging to, it's kind of happening. The low clouds are scattering out. All right. We're getting these breaks. Now, I don't think we're going to go completely blue sky, but I think we will have enough breaks, hopefully, that we'll be able to see some of the details of this eclipse. And yes, there will still be bubbly clouds around given that it is high humidity. We have a storm system approaching. Eventually those bubbly clouds will turn into thunderstorms, but not until late this afternoon and especially on into tonight. So we kind of like have chapters today. We're on the eclipse chapter. As soon as we're done here, we head back into the station and get ready for the severe weather chapter. And we'll get you through that as well. In the meantime, I'm I'm risking getting sunburned and I feel pretty good about it. I really do. <laughs> well, I'll go in the shade as soon as I'm done here, but it is uh, nice to see the sun out, guys. I'm getting excited. Can you tell? Uh, listen, we're right there with you because this is so much better yes. than we had feared because I remember a point just a few days ago when we thought there might be rain in the forecast. So to have this this is absolutely yeah. awesome if we can just hang on to it. Exactly. And when Perfect. Samantha was with Good. us a few moments yeah. ago, she said, really, this is going according to plan. Right. According to plan. All right, Rick, thank you so much. We will leave Rick there atop the tower. <laughs> and we want to head out to Northeast Texas. And one of the best spots to see totality is in Sulphur Springs. And our Martha Manjadez is watching the action there. I hear, Martha, that this is one of the best places to view the total solar eclipse. And that is correct, guys. This is the one place to be. If you, if you are in Texas, this is a place to be. And earlier, we had quite the scare because not only did we get the clouds, but we also got fog rolling in. So that really, let me tell you guys, that really was breaking my heart. But maybe around 9 o'clock, like magic, that fog dissipated. And what did we get? Crowds, crowds right here in downtown Sulphur Springs. Everybody started showing up. They brought they brought their benches, their family, their blankets. They are ready for the picnic. They are ready for this magical show that we're about to see in the skies if the clouds permit. I also was able to talk to many tourists. I spoke to people from the ch uh, Chamber of Commerce. They were telling me they were expecting around 40,000 tourists visiting town this weekend, but due to those weather conditions and those clouds, a lot of people decided to change plans last minute, but they did receive around 10,000 people visiting just over for this weekend. During those tourists, when those stories, I was able to talk to a family. They were coming from Querétaro in Mexico. They tell me, obviously, this is the North America eclipse. In Mexico, you're going to be able to see it in different parts, but they couldn't find 
a hotel. They just couldn't uh, go to anywhere, any place in Mexico. So they found the next best thing and they came to the U.S. because this is the spot to be. They flew into Dallas and they drove to Silver Springs and this is what they're telling me. And uh, saw Dallas and then Silver, uh, Silver Springs. And um, here the, the, the uh, total eclipse is going to last uh, longer because this is going to be right in the middle. And we hope that um, the weather works in our favor. But even if it doesn't, um, if it's cloudy, it's going to be even more, um, more interesting, I, I suppose. But either way, I think it is a, a very interesting phenomenon that I want to experience for the first time. That's correct. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. It is going to be the lifetime experience that we all want to live. And let me just tell you, his parents, the guy we just listed right now, his parents, in 1991, they were dating and they went on a date to the eclipse in Mexico City. So just imagine, it's a full circle. The whole family is here watching a total eclipse. Here in Sulphur Spring, the action starts at 1225 and totality begins right at 142. It's expected to last more than four minutes ending at 147. Hopefully those clouds that are right now covering the sun can go away in the next 20 minutes so we can start really experiencing this spectacle. It's just going to be amazing guys and we are ready. I'm Marta Mijares live in Sulphur Springs. Back to you now. <laughs> yeah, we all have our solar eclipse glasses ready, <laughs> taking are, glimpses ready, every chance we can. Ready to go. Yes. Martha, thank you. All right, we have Texas Sky Ranger up checking things out. We have a live picture, I believe, of Clybourne mm. Park in downtown Dallas. Wow, look at that. Look at the crowd that has gathered at Clyde Warren. You know, I remember when they built Clyde Warren uh -huh. Park, some skeptics wondered if anybody Correct. would use it. Yes. Well, there is your answer. <laughs> right, this right. is exactly what we were hoping for, that we would get this beautiful gathering spot in downtown Dallas, and people are definitely taking advantage of that. You know, they have that beautiful new fountain at Clyde Warren dances, Park. Yes. And how great uh, must that feel on a day like this? Because it's actually getting a little toasty, toasty out here yes. now that the sun is coming out. It's it's getting warm. You know what I think is interesting, Brian? It's like all these different areas kind of marketing a competition for who is going to have the best view of the total solar eclipse. Like Sulphur Springs where Martha Manhattan was, you know, the perfect spot. We're on the center line. Clyde Warren Park and its message is about today, the perfect spot to watch the eclipse. I think anywhere is going to be perfect as long as those clouds separate just a little right. bit. Wherever you are, yeah. if you get a patch of blue sky, that's the best spot. Exactly. For sure. Um, we also have Diana Zoga. She's at the Perot Museum in downtown Dallas. And that is also a fantastic place to be today, especially if you're a kid, you know, and, and we're hoping that this might be an opportunity that it will spark the imagination. Yes. How many future scientists yeah. will start today because they were blown away by the wonder of this correct. event? And there are, if I'm correct, NASA scientists, they're also part, part of a project to study what will happen during the total solar eclipse. Our Diana Zoga is there. Uh, Diana, take it away. Yes, I, yeah, talking to those kids who might be watching at home. Yes, do science, go into science, get interested because it is so cool and so fun. Uh, we're at the Pro Museum of Nature and Science. We are joined by astronomer Dr. Jeff Rich, who's with Carnegie Science, all the way from Pasadena, California, joining us just for this event. An astronomer, a PhD, the, the acres were just talking about, uh, they hope that this kind of sparks some interest in kids in science. This is what you do, you do outreach for Carnegie Science. Absolutely, that's one of my favorite things about this eclipse. I'm, I'm excited to see the eclipse, but I'm way more excited for the millions of people who are gonna get to see an eclipse for the first time, because it's such a unique and like amazing natural wonder. Um, I can see why people become eclipse chasers after they see them, so I really hope everybody enjoys it and thinks about their place in the universe as they watch it. And we were talking earlier, you've, you've seen two total eclipses like this one. You yourself uh, work in this industry, but you're a bit of an eclipse chaser yourself. Uh, I have. I've been lucky enough to see two eclipses, one in 2017 and one near our observatory in 2019. Um, I would love to see as many more as I can. Uh, I'm happy to be here. I think I still, if I can see another eclipse, I always want to try to find a way to share in the excitement of the eclipse and spread the word about how to how to view it safely but also how to view it like it's really important for everyone to see this uh, if they can 
And let's talk a little bit about what to expect. So in, in the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to see the eclipse start, right? What, what should we be looking for? What should we be starting to observe at this point? So I'm, I'm really excited because we're almost there. I've been waiting for two years for this. Um, the moon will start to move in front of the sun. So if you put those eclipse glasses on, please only look at the sun right now if you have eclipse glasses, or if you use a pinhole camera, you'll see a little bite of the, of the sun missing as the moon's disk starts to obscure the sun. This whole process takes about an hour and 20 minutes until the moon completely blocks the sun. So as you're looking at the sun safely with eclipse glasses over the next hour, um, you'll see more and more and more and more of the sun sort of disappearing. And then during totality, no part of the sun peeking out, you can take off the glasses and you're going to want to. Exactly. You you don't want to have the glasses on during totality. If you can see the sun through the glasses, then you should have the glasses on. Once totality hits, you won't be able to see anything because those glasses would block the light. You'll be able to see the corona, the sun's faint outer atmosphere. It's so faint that it can only be seen during a total solar eclipse uh, or by special spacecraft, but we're not in space. so. Um, no, and you, you, it's a, we say it's a once in a lifetime thing because you have to be in just the right place on Earth to see this. Um, so the millions of people here in Dallas uh, are in the right place on Earth. They can just go outside at 140 and safely view the total solar eclipse today. Some of our uh, kiddos are home from school today. Some of us have little kiddos. I have a four-year-old uh, who's going to try to watch this. Any tips for the parents out there to kind of help them understand what's happening and observe it on their level? So absolutely. Um, the thing we've been telling kids all week and adults is um, never look directly at the sun ever. Even on, it's an eclipse day, so everybody wants to look at the sun, but that goes for any time. Um, you only really need to look at the sun once in a while. So you put those eclipse glasses on. Uh, parents, it helps if you hold them on their head, especially little kids. The glasses might not fit quite right. So that you're there helping them make sure they look at the sun safely. And have them outside for totality if you don't want to have them outside for any other part. If you're a little worried about kids um, um, hurting their eyes, you know, restrict it to just that 10 minutes around 140. Be ready to uh, have them look up during totality and be ready, okay, when the sun comes out, we're going to be done looking. Um, but it'll be, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what my daughter thinks of, of this eclipse. She's just five, so I'm, I'm going to look forward to the report. I am too. Thank you so much, Dr. Jeff Rich. Let's send it back to you guys. All right, thank you, Dion, and thank you so much to the Perot Museum giving out a million of these solar eclipse glasses that many of us are using now, and of course we'll be using here pretty soon again. Yeah, no small task. Um, it is about uh, 12, 13, so we're only about 10 minutes away from the eclipse actually starting because it starts at 12:23 in Dallas, and it will continue until totality, which starts at 1:40. So we're getting there for sure. We are. We've seen really nice crowds gather everywhere all across the path of totality. You've got a nice crowd building here at Reunion. Yes, we do. The Cotton Bowl has uh, a lot of people. Noel of people. Walker <laughs> is there for us today. How you doing there, Noel? Um, I'm doing okay. No, most days, if, if I was about to get a sunburn, I wouldn't be too happy about it. But about 10 <laughs> minutes right. ago, we had a break in the cl clouds and cheers went up around here. And as I'm saying that, there's some clouds going over it. So I'm going to stop talking about that, and I'm going to introduce our guest, which is Bill Murda. He's a scientist with uh, NOAA's Space uh, Weather Prediction Center. That sounds like a very important job. Correct. Boulder, Colorado. So our job, we monitor the sun continuously. So we're like a regular weather forecast office, except we're not too worried about tornadoes and hurricanes. We're watching eruptions on the sun and how it can affect technology here on Earth. So we get big solar flares, these things called coronal mass ejections. These big eruptions can occur, it can, when they do occur, it can affect the technology we rely on for everything we do. Electric power, GPS, satellites, all can be imp impacted by space weather. So aside from today, where everybody's eyes are trained to the sun, th this is a very active cycle that we're in right now. Explain what we can see because of that. Yeah, so the sun goes through an 11-year cycle. So the sun is kind of like the Earth in one way. It's got a North Pole and a South Pole, a big magnet, but the sun does something a little quirky. It does a reversal of, the, of those magnetic fields over an 11-year period. And during the middle of that reversal, we see these sunspots. 
and they're localized big stress magnetic fields on the sun. The meteorologists look for low pressure center, we look for sunspots and we see them, big eruptions can occur. So we're right now in solar maximum, so it's at that period when we're seeing the most activity and if, we get, if we're lucky even during the eclipse we could actually see an eruption occurring during the eclipse. It was just at the right time, it's asking a lot, but possible. Have you seen a total solar eclipse before? I did, the one in 2017, albeit somewhat cloudy in Nebraska, but it was still just transformational, just a wonderful experience to see it. And so trying to describe for me what that feels like, not in here, but in here when you see that. It's, it's interesting because in my business, we try to create eclipses all the time because we're trying to see the corona, and we use an instrument called a coronagraph to, to see nature's coronagraph for that four minute period just to watch that the moon and the sun come together like that and produce that image that we strive to get in our operations so much it's just remarkable and it's just so important it's just a love wonderful feeling it's quite nothing like it to see it but the last one in 2017 i saw with my wife we both agreed when we retired we would chase eclipses around the world because they happen about every two years or so the next one America is not for another 20 years, but if you're prepared to travel, they will occur around the world every two years, and we're going to chase them. I would think it makes you feel small. Yes, it absolutely does. It's just a, to, to be at one with the universe almost, to watch this thing happen like that. It just puts things into perspective where we are. When you think about the trillions of stars out there, and we just we watch this extraordinary nature's gift here to us from the cosmos, it's, it's really touching. What do you think when you see all of these young kids out here to witness this and to learn about what's happening? I, I love, you know, I... Gosh, I cannot hear her. All right, to Noel Walker there at the Cotton Bowl. One other interesting thing happened happening with the Cotton Bowl. The University of Texas is Dallas is collecting these solar eclipse glasses once they're through, collecting them and then giving them to astronomer, astronomers without borders who tests, test them to see, hey, can we use them again? Right. And if so, distribute them all around the world to continue these lessons about science and educating our kids. The That's pretty cool. Ultimate in recycling. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes. And Deborah? Yes, shall I? I can see it. Yeah, it looks beautiful. It's really cool. We it have is. basically full sunshine here in downtown Dallas right now, so we're hoping we can hang on to this. Let's take a live picture from a top reunion tower. We have a crew up there, including our chief meteorologist, Rick Mitchell, overlooking Dealey Plaza there. Look at the crowd gathered there. There's always a crowd there for historical reasons, yes. but um, obviously folks gathered there to see the eclipse as well. Our coverage of this celestial showstopper continues in just a moment. Don't go away.
And welcome back to our coverage of the eclipse across North Texas. And look at this live picture of the Continental Bridge in Dallas. First off, the sun look has at come out how much in Dallas. Sunshine is there right now. That's and, huge. And the eclipse is actually beginning to start right about now. Uh, you know, of course, totality is mm -hmm. not for a few more minutes. It's 140, but right now you can start seeing something but the sun is visible and look at all of the people mm. right there in that area right by the the trinity river yeah we are hoping that the clouds stay away for now i know that later in the day we do have a chance for some severe weather but right now the sun is out and we just want it to stay like that for another hour and a half or so <laughs> yes, yes of course and today's total solar eclipse will be the last one visible from the united states until 2044. And isn't that crazy yeah See this yeah, a lot of you may remember the partial eclipse that was in 2017, but for others, their memory may go even further back. It looks kind of like a crescent moon, actually. It looks really cool. Oh, wow! In 2017, North Texans screamed with excitement for a partial solar eclipse. It was wonderful. It's like a little mouse took a bite out of the sun. It looks really amazing, yes. But we can go back even further. Deep in our NBC5 archives, we found this. The solar eclipse attracted small groups all over the SMU campus. February 26, 1979, SMU students and staffers huddled together through two layers of fully exposed photographic film they got a glimpse of a celestial phenomenon. The view of the partial eclipse left them in wonderment and awe. Just to see it alone uh, awakens the imagination. And then one begins to ask the question, how does the universe actually move? How do we know that these three bodies, the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun, are in this regular motion with respect to each other where we can predict exactly when such a three-body alignment is going to occur? If you miss today's eclipse, you'll have another chance in the year 2024. That's the year that Texas will see a total solar eclipse. Now that we're in 2024, you won't see a total solar eclipse in Dallas-Fort Worth for another 293 years in 2317. But before then, in 2045, a total solar eclipse will stretch from California to Florida, and the tip of the Texas panhandle will be in the path of totality. Adrian Vaughn explains. Total solar eclipses only occur right here on Earth. The moon will pass between the sun and the Earth, casting a shadow on our planet, blocking out the sun's light. The sun is about 400 times bigger than the moon, but the moon is about 400 times closer to the Earth. So here they'll look like they're almost the same size. Total solar eclipses happen somewhere on the planet about once a year, but you have to be in the right place to watch them. And a lot of times they happen over water or over places that are really hot hard to get to. The path of totality for today's event moves across 400 miles of Texas up through the Mississippi and Ohio River Valleys and eventually into interior sections of the Northeast. Clouds, of course, will play a vital role in what we see today. So here's a look outside right now of how things stand. And things are looking much brighter across North Texas. Definitely some good news as we are gearing up for this total solar eclipse, partial eclipse uh, happening right now already. Uh, as we are moving through the day, you can see those clouds starting to thin out. And that's definitely some good news for all of us that are uh, just really excited to see this event unfold today. Temperatures, you've heard Rick and, and, and the folks there at Reunion Tower talking about how warm and how humid it is. Temperatures are currently in the mid it's an upper 70s in place and we've got the dew point values into the mid 60s right now. So it is uh, humid out there and we've got the juicy atmosphere in place. This is going to play a vital role in the, the severe weather aspect that we see later on today. That partial eclipse, as mentioned, it has now begun the time of totality between 140 and 144. This is in Dallas and things will wrap up this afternoon just a little after three o'clock. The time of totality does differ depending on where you find yourself here across North Texas, a spot like Paris, their time of totality between 144 and 148 this afternoon. As we are moving through this afternoon, we are going to continue to see high clouds and occasionally breaks of some sunshine here across the area. Something else that we'll see temperatures actually drop a little bit during the time of totality. And as we move into the afternoon and into the latter half of the afternoon, storms will be developing. And this is a big update, especially compared to 
where we had this this morning. The level three threat for severe weather has now really expanded. We've got the concern for large hail, damaging winds, and a few tornadoes. Ugh, okay, Adrian, thank you. Yeah, and people that are so excited right now, yeah. all over North Texas, uh, we've got people in from out of town, out of the country. Uh, and they, there's also a lot of excitement on social yeah. media as yeah. well. People are really talking about this. So let's look at a few of their posts. They've been great today. Here's one from Eagle Nation. Yeah. Practicing Must be a school. Ready. Yeah, the yeah. Eagle, Eagle Nation News. <laughs> uh, so cute on their own news set. Oh, no, that is cool. So that's a school. Uh, and here's one from Cesar Gamez. Azel Michael Myers is ready for the solar eclipse. How, what an interesting mask That's to put on for today. That's a for you. How about yeah, that one? Okay. Um, and <laughs> just, we want to see your pictures as well. So use the hashtag NBC5 Eclipse when you do post on X or on Instagram. We are ready for those photos. It is important that you do have the correct eyewear today. Experts say that trying to watch the solar event without protection can cause some severe damage in as quickly as five seconds. So make sure that the glasses you wear have the ISO compliance standard sticker and a note with a number. But if you cannot get glasses, there are still other ways to view the eclipse. To use indirect viewing methods. So that could be looking under the leaves of trees. It could be looking at the shadow cast by your own hand and you're effectively making pinhole viewers with the holes that you put here or another object that can act as a pinhole viewer. All right, so there you have it. If you don't have those glasses, or if you do have some glasses left over from the uh, other eclipse that we had earlier, make sure to check them before you use them today, and then you can check to see if your pair is on the approved list of the American Astronomical Society. And website. the partial eclipse is starting, but we're going to have oh, more that. coverage right after the break. Welcome back, everyone, to our Lone Star Eclipse coverage. Look at this. No. Look at this. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> we are now in a partial eclipse. You can see the moon starting to creep over the sun there. It's really thrilling. It is, Brian. You know, because I think because we've talked about it for so long, right? These dates of when solar eclipses are happening, be it partial, be it total, be it lunar. I mean, scientists know the date years in advance. Which is remarkable to me. <laughs> exactly. I don't know how they do that. They're, well, they're scientists. And so to have this date on the calendar for so long and to, to finally see it beginning 
yes, we've had some high clouds, but right at this moment, we know that this celestial showdown, as you've described, this cosmic coincidence that we've been waiting for when the moon moves in between the sun and the earth for this rare alignment, it, it is happening at this very moment. And this is why you need your glasses to see this. We're able to see this because our photographer, uh, Steve Stewart, has a special filter on the right. camera that allows him to see, okay, clouds go away. But that is kind of a cool shot too. But, but how fortunate are we? We were concerned that we wouldn't be able to see anything, but this is all we're dealing with, just some high clouds here in downtown Dallas, but we actually have a pretty good view at this hour and it's warm. We're a little concerned about getting sunburned, <laughs> but if I get sunburned today, I don't care. Yeah, kind of like Noel Walker said right, out at the exactly. Cotton Bowl, yes. So we have meteorologist Samantha Davies. We do here indeed. With us as well. Samantha has made her way out into the crowd. There is a crowd here on the lawn at nice Reunion crowd Tower, gathering. yes. Samantha, you must have a couple of a folks. Yeah, guys, I have some people with me. My I, my IFB cutout, so if you ask me a question, I didn't hear it. But yes, I am right behind you guys. And all morning, I have been talking with Daniel and Danielle. They came into North Texas from Long Island. And you know, for getting a total eclipse, total solar eclipse, for some people, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah. They traveled to Nashville to see the 2017 eclipse. And what was it like during totality? It really becomes kind of like um, early morning, like the birds will start chirping, you'll hear the crickets and the bugs. It, that's kind of what it looks like in regards to lighting. It doesn't get pitch black. It kind of gets kind of like the early morning hours. And it's, it's like almost you're look, like you're looking through sunglasses. Does it feel eerie? Like how did you feel when that moment of totality? You're like, this is it. For me, it was kind of just like a moment in awe. It wasn't necessarily, like some people will say it's like a spiritual moment for me. It was just looking at nature and thinking this is really like incredible that this happens to us. Yeah, and you were there as well. Yeah, it was for me that moment of totality. It, it was the coldest I'd ever been at midday. I was going to ask that because they say that you get about a 10 degree temperature drop. Does it feel that dramatic? Oh, absolutely. It feels almost instant. The second the sun goes out, the, the temperature drops. Now, you guys were out in Nashville in 2017 taking pictures. You're going to do the same thing today. You've got quite the setup. Talk to me about the different cameras that you brought with you. So what I have is pretty much a basic camera because um, I'm an amateur photographer. So what I have is a Canon EOS um, Rebel T6. Um, it's basic, um, one of the basic lens that comes with it. And I just bought a solar filter on Amazon so that to make sure that the it's kind of like with your eyes, you can't let the camera look at it too long. Yeah, and you have video as well, so you're going to get video yeah. and photos. So yeah, I have an Akaso Go 8, I believe, with a uh, cut-up lens from one of the glasses that they give out today, just in there to just record it, and I have it set to a time lapse. And what did the photos look like in 2017? When you look back at them now and you see them, what did you? What do you see and what are you hoping to capture today? What I got in 2017, I got one shot of the totality and it's just like a almost like a blue, a white blue ring around the sun or around the moon. Um, and I'm hoping to get something like that and what I believe they call like diamonds. So like that little like a little like um, almost like a, a star coming off the sun looking like a diamond on a ring. That is so cool. Welcome to Dallas. I can't wait to see your pictures and nice to meet you guys. Thank you. Yeah, so we have people that guys have traveled all over here just in the lawn at Reunion Tower. They are from Long Island. There's another person here from Los Angeles that spent quite a bit of money to get here. So there's a lot of excitement building. I just took a peek at the partial and you can just now start to see that moon moving over the sun and it is pretty cool to see. Samantha, and I think this couple that Samantha's been talking to, they've really made the most of this experience, right. Brian. Yeah, because they went to Great Fun where the party was happening, experienced that, and they're really just trying to take it all in, as, as we should. Right. Mm -hmm. Meteorologist Rick Mitchell is high atop Reunion Tower Force. Rick, I'm going to put my glasses on, and I'm looking up here, and I can actually yes. see it right now. This is awesome. Right, you know, it's one thing to see it on, on television, but my, my routine is just constantly to look at this, to absorb it. Uh, I mean, you think about how many people have walked the earth and only a, a very small fraction of those people throughout history have ever seen what we're going to see. Imagine the exclusive club that we are going to be in, assuming you're in the, the, the area of totality, 
And so I just got to enjoy it. I just got to enjoy it. I'm, I'm happy as a meteorologist that the cloud forecast, we talked about low clouds. One thing we were wrong about, there's no high clouds, all right? There's no veil of cirrus clouds. That has yet to, to occur, so that's good. The low, dense cloud cover that we had this morning, the stratus clouds, those have scattered out into little puffy cotton ball cumulus clouds, and that's allowing us to see what is happening. And there you see, you can see the the moon beginning to make its presence known, invading from the right side of your screen to the left. And totality is uh, about an hour and roughly 10 minutes away. And I think what we're going to have is what we have right now. There'll be times where we won't see the sun because there may be a cumulus cloud passing over, kind of like what you saw right there. And then there'll be times where our view through our glasses will be unobstructed. And obviously, uh, we're going to have the total darkness, which I think is going to be just incredible. So I'm just really, uh, yes, I'm working today, but I'm also trying to uh, absorb and take in as much of this as I can, because it will never come again, in, at least in my lifetime, unless I want to travel up to Oklahoma in 2045, which is a possibility. But. Uh, we have it here and now, and we're about to, uh, uh, to become part of a very exclusive club. I was talking to my brother last night. He lives up in Nebraska. He's a little older than I am. And he said, what, what is the big deal? I said, the big deal is, man, very few people have seen this. I mean, yeah, you can have people that go and travel, right. But the fraction of those people that have ever lived, that have gotten or that get to see what we're going to see today, is extremely small and it is a big deal. And I'm allowing myself to have wonderment, all right? I'm not so cynical that it's, oh, it's just a shadow. No, we understand what's happening, but it's okay to be amazed to view what is happening. And I know the, the biggest part is still about an hour away, but as you can tell, I'm pretty excited. We're gonna enjoy this. As you've heard, there's the potential for severe weather later on in the day. And you know we're all gonna head back to the station. We're gonna cover the severe weather as well. And you know what, we're gonna get through that just fine. And, uh, but in the meantime, oh, it's fun. Good, fun stuff. Guys, First, I'm gonna watch you know this. Cool I'm gonna send this. it back to you so that, yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah, it, it's a slow process, yes. right? Yes, I mean, gonna... there's a buildup, yeah. and then even after totality, we'll still have this long partial eclipse to enjoy. This goes on for hours. Until about three o'clock yeah. this afternoon. And I think Ray makes a really good point there, Brian. You know, you listen to people like, I'm gonna try to get a picture, Brian, try to get a picture. The people like uh, Candace Sweat introduced him to us in the last hour, John Carmichael, who was up in that plane on that Southwest Airlines flight in 2017 and got that one cool, iconic shot. I mean, even people like him say, leave the photography to the professionals because you wanna be able to get those glasses and look up at the sky and, ex and experience something beautiful. And people are just like, once in a lifetime, once in a lifetime. Well, eclipses happen all the time. Yes, that's true. You know, they happen over the ocean or in places we don't see. But right here in North Texas, to be in the path of totality, first happened in 1878. It's happening in 2024. Next time will be 2317. So we talked about this for us. It really is once in a lifetime. This thing, yeah. put it down. Yeah, just enjoy be it. Be in the moment and just save it up here. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yes. Yeah. So a little bit cloudy here when we last checked in with Russellville, Arkansas. Yeah. They had like a bluebird <laughs> sky up there. Alicia Barrera made the trip up the road about 350 miles. How's it looking up there, Alicia? Yeah, it was about a five hour road trip. Um, Rick was talking about it just a minute ago, how yes, we're working, but does it really feel like work? We get to experience this once in a lifetime event. It is sunny. I think we're starting to get sunburnt over here and the excitement is just building up. You'll see that some of the kids um, already have their glasses on and they 
just you just hear them say it's starting it's starting so they are so so pumped russellville arkansas population 29,000. so pretty small if you ask me and i met you said me garcia um her family was selling tamales out here you said me you tell me this is never this town is never this packed no it is not not even with our local festivals we have here like our art walks or the fall fest any of that it's never been this packed i'm really shook about the outcome that came out today and how would you describe your town for those that don't know it because so many are finding out about russellville there are more than 50 states represented more people from more than 30 countries here today to find out more about your town <laughs> i know well we are Russellville. we're known as the river valley i believe that the river valley is such a small local community and I feel like within the last few years, it's been so known for the local businesses we have here. Like we're downtown right now. All of the downtown areas are small owned or business owned. So it's exciting for you. It is. Are you ready with your glasses? Uh, yes. Her, her <laughs> grandmother has them on the sidelines over there, right? Yeah, you said your, your family does. <laughs> All right. You said me, thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. So she is born and raised here in Russellville, Arkansas. She's been uh, hanging with us for a little bit uh, just to be able to let you back at home know what it's like here. But people, again, so, so excited. Again, you see mom, dad, people of all ages already putting on their glasses. And let's check it out. Yeah, you're starting to see something up there. So it is very exciting. Um, and you have people, I know it's cloudy in Dallas, but in North Texas, over here, people just trying to find some type of shade, popping up the umbrellas as you see back here. But it's just a beautiful day over here in Arkansas. You guys? Definitely so. All right, our Alicia Varela there in Russellville, Arkansas. We've had a little bit of breaks in the clouds here and we've enjoyed it, although the clouds are kind of nice right now because we was getting a little bit warm. Exactly. You know, we have cameras and crews stationed all along the path of totality. You have to look at your screen right now. If you're not looking at your screen, you need to turn around and look at this mm -hmm. view. This is a camera that NASA has. It's in Mazatlan, Mexico. Now, Mazatlan is on the Pacific coast, and this is where the shadow first touches land. So Mazatlan is ahead of us in terms of totality. The moon a little more than halfway over the sun. This is what we can expect in just a short time. That is breathtaking. It is, Brian. It is. And Samantha Davies, one of our meteorologists, talked about this earlier, how, you know, the, the sun is so far away from Earth. And, and the moon is smaller than the sun, of course, but at this distance, when the moon slides over in front of the sun, it's almost like they're the same size, but that is not the case. Well, because of this, this cosmic showdown, this spectacle in the sky, we are seeing this beautiful sight, and they are a beach town. Mazatlan, they're on the beach, a perfect place right, to yeah. watch Can this. Can you imagine being on vacation? You're enjoying you know, your, your margarita on the beach in Mazatlan, and this is unfolding. This can yeah. only happen when there's a new moon also. Correct. Correct. Yeah, which is fascinating. Now, when the moon completely slides in front of the sun there in Mazatlan, you should be able to see the corona, which is that, you know, that crown of gas mm -hmm. around the sun that you can never see unless there is totality. So this is what we can look forward to. If you look in the corner of your screen there, that is a live picture of what is or was of what is happening here in North, in Texas. North Texas. We'll be watching yeah. this picture here I'll, in Mazatlan. And they're fortunate because there had been concerns that there would be cloud cover in Mexico right. as well, but they're, but they're getting lucky as we appear to be as well. And Brian, yes, I'm looking up at our shot here as I'm sure many people are stepping outside to do, and you can see the moon coming farther um, into the sun here in the Dallas area. We're about an hour away from totality. 1244 is your time. 140 is when it is supposed to hit four minutes of darkness. Um, I hope, Brian, when those four minutes hit, that it goes slowly so everybody can soak it in and understand what is happening. I want to hear, I want to hear the crickets chirping. If there are birds around, I want to hear the birds sing. We're hearing helicopters yes. right now <laughs> <laughs> because we're in downtown Dallas at Reunion Tower and the party is definitely building here. But there's also a party going on at Samuel Farm in Mesquite. Yes, and that's where our Alana Quillen is with a bunch of campers. Some are day campers. Some have been there a few for a few days, Alana. Yes, and you know what? I think I have found, I think I have found the person who has traveled the furthest to get here. This is Kasha from Sydney, Australia. This is incredible. We've been looking at the sun. Let's turn around and look at this. The sun is directly behind us. Incredible. I mean, this is incredible. It's marvelous. 
<laughs> we have been freaking out looking at this. This is incredible. We're really starting to see it here. We've got cloud breaks. It looks so good out here. Kasha, tell me, why did you travel to here of all places from Sydney? I heard about the eclipse in 2017 and wasn't able to make it, and it sounded so marvelous that I saw there was a direct flight from Sydney to Dallas, and I thought, 15 hours, and I can see this? I know. Oh, of course. Yeah. So. And just to clarify, you're originally from the East Coast United States, but you've been living in Australia for over a decade. So, I mean, that's your home now. It is. I mean, how does it feel to be here in Texas? It's amazing. I've never really traveled here before, and I've seen the blue bonnets. Everyone's been so lovely, so kind. Yeah. So happy to be here for the eclipse. I know, and you're one of the campers here at Samuel Farm. There's yes. been so much to do here. What have you been up to yes. for the last couple of days? I've listened to incredible lectures um, by the astronomers. I've gotten to hear from the urban biologist of Dallas Parks, which has been great. Um, gotten to learn about the native cats from the Native Cat Association. Um, just walked around the beautiful, the beautiful area. I love so. that. And so, okay, let's take another look at the sun again because you earlier, I just love your energy <laughs> and your reaction. So How incredible. does it feel to be actually seeing this with your own eyes right now? Amazing. This morning, it was cloudy and I was so nervous we wouldn't see anything, you know, still glad to be here. But like, look at that. Yeah. Wow. It's like it's eating the, eating the sun. <laughs> it's, it's so beautiful. Um, I know. It, it's incredible. And, and the fact that you tried to come out here in 2017 yeah. to view wow. this, yeah. and you're finally here in I'm Dallas, finally Texas. Here. Yes. Seeing it. I mean, how does it feel? Amazing, amazing. <laughs> I feel like you should put yourself in wonder. And here we are in the path of wonder. I know. So, this is so great. With you, Alana. Yes. And yes. we've got thousands of people mm. out here as well. I mean, people have been filing into Samuel Farm out here. Yes. Are you picking out a good spot or is it going to be right here? It's right here, I think. <laughs> so, Perfect. Yes. Thank Very you lucky. so much, Kasha, so much. for joining us. Again, they've got people streaming in here, I'm sure, throughout the next hour or so. They're expecting 4,000 people total to be here, including some of the campers. So it's just an incredible experience, and I can't wait to capture the excitement from people when totality hits in just an hour. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Alana. We'll check back with you a little bit later in the day. I loved how she described that, Brian, the path of wonder. Yes. And the wonder starts along the Pacific coast in Mexico. Beautiful shot provided by NASA of the moon crossing in front of the sun about halfway there in the partial eclipse, a little bit further along than we are. Right. But it's a sight that you have to see dealing with a little bit of clouds there maybe as well. But still, you can see the moon there almost halfway through the sun. That's again Mazatlan, Mexico. That uh, eclipse making its way here to North Texas in less than an hour now. Our coverage of Lone Star Eclipse will continue after a quick break.
Welcome back everyone to Lone Star Eclipse. We have crews and cameras stationed all along the path of totality. This is a live picture from Mazatlan, Mexico, that resort town on the Pacific coast. This is where totality will happen first. It is also where it will end first. And you can see they are almost to totality here in Mazatlan. The moon slowly creeping across the sun, only a crescent left. What a dramatic sight. This is what we can expect to happen in North Texas around, you know, 1.30 or so. Welcome back, everyone. As I mentioned, we have crews stationed all along the path of totality. One of those crews is our Phil Prazen. He is in Ennis for us today. Quite a party happening there in Ennis, Phil. It is in historic downtown Ennis. They have an event here called uh, Eclipse in Ennis. Eclipse over Ennis. Eclipse yes, over Ennis. And I'm here with Ashley Kalunga from the city. And we're about an hour away, less than an hour away from the actual uh, totality here. Yes. And there was a lot of doom and gloom over the clouds, but from here we can see it yes. every once in a while. We can see it. We can see the partial starting to happen. So I think it's going to be a perfect day. Um, Tell us a little bit about what goes into putting on an event like this. It's, it has to be a lot of work. Yes. So for months and months, we have had weekly meetings across all city departments, police chief, fire chief, uh, representatives from our hospital, our school district, really an all hands on deck just to make sure that we are prepared for everything and really want to give our visitors and residents an amazing experience. What, what are the big kind of challenges that you have to overcome to to put on an event like this? Um, you know, we didn't really run into a lot of challenges. I think the biggest challenge, we host events year round, big events, um, but this was feeling like it was going to be bigger and it was spread out throughout our entire city. So we have people at our parks, uh, we have people all over the city, whereas our events are normally in one location. So it was really just kind of thinking through the logistics of that and kind of handling the influx of people. Um, and so far, so good. I think everything's going great. And what's your reaction to, you know, have, have you heard a lot from people who have been coming here about, you know, the break in the clouds? I mean, you can see a lot of people looking up with their glasses and you can see, yes, they can see the sun and it could be a really fascinating show. Yes, I think people are excited that it looks like we're going to see some blue sky. And honestly, people came here from all over the world. We have a family here from New Zealand, a photographer from Paris. Most of the people that I've just met in passing are from other countries and they selected Ennis and they're going to stay here and hope for those clear skies. Um, and there was a lot of work also with the schools. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of kids that, that are that should usually would be in school today. Yes. So Ennis ISD did close school today. Um, so all of those kiddos, you know, with traffic and not really knowing the logistics of it uh, kind of made us nervous for the bus routes. So when they canceled school, the city partnered with NSISD and gave all 7,000 students custom eclipse glasses, an informational packet, and our National Honor Society at the high school put all those packets together for us. It was a great collaboration. And you know, I, I guess big picture, you, you you have this event, and then in a week and a half, two weeks, you have uh, you know your famous Blue Bonnet Festival here. Yes. I mean, how important are big events like this for for towns like Ennis? Oh, they're huge. Um, Blue Bonnet season is our number one kind of tourism driver. So April one through April thirtieth, also have people from all over the country, all over the globe here to see our Blue Bonnets. Um, and it's just a great way to bring new people into town. And we have heard over and over, oh, we moved here from Boston or California, but they came here for the Blue Bonnets four years ago and fell in love, or they came here for Polka Fest and fell in love. So it's kind of our, our front door to the city, if you will, our events. Thank you so much. Ashley Kalunga, thank you so much. We'll send it back to you in, the, uh, in Dallas. All right, thank you, Phil. Our Wayne Carter is standing by for us in Carrollton this afternoon. Hey Wayne, what's going on there? Hey, how are you? Let me tell you, a lot of fun here at Country Place Elementary School. They have stations set up all around the schoolyard where kids are getting a chance to experience different activities to teach them a little bit about the eclipse. This is kind of one of my coolest things that I wanted to show you. And we've been talking about the clouds forever, as luck would have it. We have a cloud over us right now. But if it wasn't there, you could hold this out, and the sun would cast shadows on the ground. I'm hoping this cloud will pass and I can show it to you. But 
the clap. Anyway, um, so what that's doing is giving kids an idea of just how cool the eclipse will be on the ground, not just in the air. They want them to kind of experience all of this. And one of the other things they're doing in, in one of these stations is this crazy contraption that Jackson has. And I looked through this and I saw like a, a little beam of light explain it to me, Jackson, because I don't get it. Uh, it's it works by um, when the light from the sun comes through this hole. Yep. You can look into the box and it shows like a tiny little bit of light from the sun, like barely shown through. And it's really cool whenever the clouds go away and you can just look at it. Yeah, I got to see it. It was like a really cool little like representation of what the sun will look mm -hmm. like. Yeah. Have Have you had fun out here? Yeah, yeah, we. We've done like two stations so yeah. far, and they're they're fun. This is like a once in a lifetime experience, really. Have you done this one yet? I want to show them because the, the cloud moved for a second. Yeah. So this is what I was talking about. You kind of hold that out; it puts shadows on the ground, but it, it, it's just a reminder of just how what the sun will do and what you'll see on the ground. The teachers tell me that during the eclipse, I'll see some really cool stuff. And when the sun's out, I got my cool eclipse glasses. I can look up and we're seeing just the slightest bit of a sliver, the first signs of this. So there's so much to see, there's so much to do, and we're gonna continue to do that. Tiffany organized this whole thing. Thank you for all the work that you have done. The PTA partnering with the teachers to try to make this happen and be a cool day for the kids. And they're having a lot of fun out here, Brian, Deborah. All right, thank you, Wayne. You know, we talk about this being a communal experience. Right. Think about this, there are 12 million Texans yes. in the path of totality and 31 million Americans. That's a lot of people. It is. All experiencing this together. I have a sister in New York who she's in that part of the country where she's going to see some right. of it. Another in Virginia will get the partial eclipse, but still it is whether total or partial, we're experiencing something special today. And that little boy nailed it. Yeah. And then we'll talk and talk and talk about it. Look at this live picture. This is Mazatlan, Mexico. They are almost in totality. They reach totality at 107. We'll be right back. Incredible. It's something you remember your whole life. You know, it's cool. It's something that you don't get to see too often, so why not?
go see a cool celestial event. We want to see the entire eclipse get the full the experience. The one seed in the east, but right now the main focus. First at two, a lot of excitement in the air with the eclipse day finally here. You'll see the total solar eclipse in the sky today over parts of Mexico, 15 U.S. states, and eastern Canada. This is the long path of totality where complete darkness will start in southern Texas and move across the Midwest before ending here in northern Maine. 31 million people live within that path. And this is a live look right now at the sky. This is a feed from NASA showing the different areas how the eclipse looks at this hour. Thanks for joining us this afternoon here on Boston News Daily. I'm Darren Batello. So we have a team across this area, coverage all day. Our Mary Marcos is in New Hampshire right now talking to people traveling to the state. Matt Fortin is in Vermont with what we're expecting to see there. But before we get to them, let's start with Sydney Welch. She's the expert here on the total solar eclipse. Last night we were showing people those glasses and today they yes. finally get to use them. Yes, you finally get to use them and what a gorgeous day for it. Really across the region, New England lucked out some of the best viewing conditions for the country. Now notice Berlin Burlington, some upper level clouds on this camera just should cause a bit of a haze. Shouldn't be any obstruction to the view as far as clouds go. Main gorgeous blue skies out there and Boston seeing similar conditions. Of course, Boston not in the path of totality, but still 90 percent, 93 percent, excuse me, uh, percent of the sun is going to be covered. It's not the same 93 to 100 because of all of the sun's power, but it is still going to be quite the sight to see. So for Boston, and specifically 216 that start time we're really coming up on it and then maximum 329 for the maximum eclipse this is what it's going to look like during that max time you're going to want to look west southwest you can't miss it it's the sun in the sky and then the partial eclipse is going to end around 439 so as far as temperatures go we're in the upper 60s in spot spots Cambridge at 68 Boston College 68 degrees really across the board we're seeing those those middle and upper 60s. It's gorgeous out there. Boston specifically right along the coast, a little cooler from that sea breeze. During the peak eclipse times, that's when we're going to notice the temperature falling by a few degrees. If you're in totality, it's going to fall by 7 to 10 degrees. Uh, between 5 and 10 degrees, that cool down comes into the picture. So the partial eclipse starting at 216. By 245, you'll start noticing those temperatures falling a bit as the sun does become covered. Peak eclipse time, the potential for uh, uh, nature to start reacting to the eclipse is going to be there, even not in full totality. As it darkens, nature could potentially react, and then we'll start gaining back that warmth once the partial eclipse ends. Warmth will return, and just a gorgeous few days for it. Yesterday, we were clouded up, and by Wednesday, we're going to see rain chances returning, and we're going to see them sticking around for the end of the week. So couldn't ask for a better stretch of time for this to occur. Darren? All right, thank you, Sydney. Well, a lot of people hitting the road. I don't know if you saw a lot of traffic on 95, but one spot they're heading, New Hampshire. Sky Ranger giving us a look earlier this morning at the traffic as people head north. So Mary Marcos is in Hookset, New Hampshire. She's talking to people traveling in the heavy traffic to view the eclipse. And Mary, it looks like a holiday weekend. Yeah, Darren, I can tell you, I've never seen people looking so happy while sitting in traffic. They have their eclipse playlists going and they're ready to see the dark side of the moon. Now, the path of the total solar eclipse goes across more than a dozen U.S. states and northern New England has the best weather for a clear view. Officials across the region have been urging people to get to their destinations early, stay late, pack snacks, fill up their gas tanks and be patient. We're just a few miles south of the 9389 split so drivers here have been heading north to northern New Hampshire and Vermont and it has been backed up for all really all of the morning this is what our ride up looked like earlier triple a northeast is expecting holiday weekend traffic levels state officials are estimating up to 20,000 people will head to the most northern part of New Hampshire up to 40,000 people will visit Maine and around 160,000 are going to Vermont now that's according to the state's emergency management agency but and none of that is stopping people from driving hours for a once in a lifetime experience. And I'm going to see the solar eclipse. And we know exactly where we're going to stop on the highway. It's in the path of totality. But I don't know what this traffic, if we can make it or not. We'll try. <laughs> We're almost there, just two hours or three hours away. 
So that total eclipse is expected to happen around 3.30, depending on where you're watching. And we are expecting more traffic from people heading back. Live in Hooks at Mary Marcos, NBC10 Boston. Thank you, Mary. Well, our team coverage continuing right now over in Burlington, Vermont. Matt Fortin has been there all day and joins us live there from the shoreline next to Lake Champlain. And Matt, what's it look like out there? I see a lot of people behind you. Darren, let me tell you something. People are just excited to see this thing. We're hearing some announcements right now about how we are about 15 minutes away from the partial eclipse beginning here. So a lot of excitement. Burlington is really rolling out the red carpet for people coming from all over to enjoy this eclipse and the city itself. And we really couldn't ask for much better weather either. There are a little bit uh, of clouds gathering, but we still should be able to see things uh, pretty well. And take a look behind me. It looks like a concert tailgate here, except with maybe a few few more eyeglasses and telescopes than a typical concert, but a lot of excitement here along Lake Champlain. So there are 11 official viewing areas around the city, but this lakefront one that we are here at is the largest one. People have been filing down all day since early this morning. The earliest to arrive were able to snag some benches. People have been really talking about how they're coming from all different states and they all have different reasons for wanting to witness this phenomenon in person. For some, they just like space. For others, like Jennifer Garland of Massachusetts, the eclipse takes on a whole deeper meaning since she missed out on the 2017 eclipse. It's going to be really cool because we're going to see that shadow that the eclipse is creating moving across the lake as we approach totality. So this is one of the best places to view the eclipse to get that long view across the lake. These things are like once, maybe twice in a lifetime, and I, I don't want to miss it. I love, we love ast astronomy and how the world works, and these, these things are almost mystical. Yeah, so a lot of excitement. We're hearing a lot of that type of hype before this eclipse as we wait for it here in Burlington, and we will keep you updated all afternoon long. But for now, we're live from Burlington. I'm Matt Fortin. All right, thank you, Matt. With a lot of people trying to get a glimpse of the eclipse, a reminder it could be dangerous, so make sure you don't look right at it if you're not careful. We've seen all these special eclipse glasses, and doctors say they are very necessary. We talked with the UMass Memorial Health doctor. He says you need to make sure you have solar eyewear with an ISO number 12312-2. That will give you enough protection to watch the solar eclipse. And the only time you can take them off is if you are up north in the path of totality. That will only last for a few minutes. Looking at the sun without the right eye protection for even a short time can damage your eye permanently. So it is because of these reasons that even looking at the sun just for a few seconds uh, and knowing that it can cause blindness, it is very important that to look at the sun with the proper eye protection. And keep in mind that using just ordinary sunglasses, even very dark ones or homemade filters, are not safe for looking at the sun. That doctor says you need to use these glasses even if you're trying to take a picture with your cell phone just to put them over the lens like this to protect your eyes. And the spectacle bringing a ton of people to Indiana. Take a look at this massive lines of people this morning waiting to get inside the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The famed track is offering a day's worth of fun centered around the eclipse. We're told up to 50,000 spectators from 49 different states and 25 other countries are expected to be at the Motor Speedway. As you know, today could be a once in a lifetime experience for millions of people with the eclipse being visible in most of the U.S. So the NBC News team is spread all across the country to capture this moment in history. Take a look. I'm Morgan Chesky in Kerrville, Texas, in the heart of the Texas Hill Country, and we're moments away from that incredible moment, the path of totality coming right over this community, one of the first in the nation to witness that perfect alignment of sun, moon, and earth. NASA is here, thousands of people from all over the world getting their front row seat to history. I'm Jesse Kirsch in Cleveland, Ohio, where tens of thousands of people are expected to rock out for this total solar eclipse from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to a major league ballpark. So many of us hoping the skies will clear for those magical moments of totality. Hey, I'm George Solis in New York City. On board the USS Intrepid, where we're expecting about 6,000 people to line up to get a rare glimpse of this cosmic ballet we call the total solar eclipse. Here in New York, we're about to see about a 90% totality. That doesn't mean we're not going to have as much fun. Make sure you stay with our NBC News team spread across the country for live special coverage of the rare total solar eclipse right here on NBC.
So as you can see, we're all over NBC's Jay Gray's, another correspondent on the ground on this historic day. He joins us live this afternoon from Junction, Texas. Hi, Jay. So how's the weather holding up? We heard there were some concerns this morning about the forecast. She got a big hole. You there, Jay? <laughs> How you doing, Jay? Hey there, guys. We are just chatting with some folks here at the Texas Eclipse uh, Music Festival. For three days, they have been celebrating the eclipse, and now it has started here. We are in a partial eclipse and working our way towards totality. Once totality hits here, it'll last for just over three minutes, complete darkness. We're already feeling the temperature drop. We're seeing things get a touch darker, but... There's some clouds involved with that as well. I can tell you, uh, we were out overnight into the early morning. Clear skies, beautiful, beautiful stars out here in the Texas Hill Country. Then as the sun started to come up, boy, the clouds started building and moving in. Big clouds. And uh, and we got worried because the forecast said we're going to have some uh, some cloud issues. But sure enough, they burned off uh, as we got closer to eclipse time. And now we've got a great view of this. We hope it holds because there are clouds in the offing and they could be moving in. But right now, uh, we've got a great look at this eclipse and a lot of people here to enjoy it. Take a look around. And, and I can tell you, like I said, this has been a festival over the last last three days, uh, we've had rodeo events, we've had chili cook-offs, margarita mix-offs, a lot of music, a lot of dancing, so everyone celebrating, and it's ending today with the star of the show, literally the star in the sun and the moon passing in front, and a lot of people very excited after being nervous about the forecast, very excited about what we're getting to see. Yeah, so chili and margaritas doesn't sound too bad to me. So if the clouds do block the view in some states, when will people get another chance to witness a total solar eclipse here in the U.S.? Did you hear that, Jay? All right, that was Jay Gray from NBC News joining us today. It's, it's too late. Right? The shots are... All right, and if you do take any photos of the solar eclipse, send them our way. Scan the QR code right there on your screen and keep the tab open to quickly submit any pics. You may see your images right here on television. Coming up, standing in the face of hate, how one area came together this week after a wall of posters showing people held by Hamas was completely destroyed and a terrifying scene on a Southwest flight during takeoff. Even with our wide selection of brand name appliances, finding what you want at State Street Discount is easy. A GE Top Freezer Refrigerator, $649, save 80 bucks. A loaded LG 65-inch OLED 4K Smart TV, $1599.99, save $900. And a stainless GE Electric Range, $799, save 100 bucks. We've been committed to personal service and great prices. Getting to know our customers so we can help you save, that's always been the best part of the job. State Street Discount, all you want. It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate America. This is Ford Truck Month. Now get 1.9% APR for 72 months on a 2023 Ford F-150 only at your New England Ford dealers. Hey, Massachusetts, the Powerball jackpot is over $1 billion and growing. Get in on the action with your favorite lottery app, jackpot.com. The easiest way to buy Powerball, Mega Millions, and official state lottery games right from your phone. And hey, now you get a free ticket with your first order. You choose your favorite lottery game, pick your lucky numbers, get a verified scan of your printed ticket to view on your phone. Get notified instantly when you win. Never miss another jackpot. Download the jackpot.com lottery app today. Use promo code jackpot and get a free lottery ticket with your first order. A contractor accused of stealing thousands from homeowners. After NBC10 starts covering his actions across the state. Now he's been arrested. This prosecutor, all his story telling, is just an honor. He's got a lot of people to do. This is not against the contractor. It's against the dishonest client. So you couple all the orders that he ignored with the fact that there's intense public scrutiny because of NBC10, yet he continues to go out there, take money from unsuspecting homeowners, and do NBC10 Boston, news worthy of you.
Today, a man from Brockton, Massachusetts, is set to face a murder charge. He's accused of hitting a man with his car, then beating him with a brick, and police say this was no random attack. Police say they obtained surveillance video showing the horrific nature of Stuart Smith's death Saturday morning. They say Vasco Semedo drove into Smith, then backed up to drive over him again. Then Semedo allegedly got out of his car, picked up a brick, and started beating Smith while he was on the ground. Let's go to Worcester, Massachusetts now, where police say three teenagers were shot. This was the scene on Clarkson Street last night. So police say the victims were two 18-year-old women as well as a 17-year-old boy. Police are not releasing their names as of right now. It's also unclear what led up to the shooting. A really big show of solidarity in Newton, Massachusetts this weekend. People came together to rebuild a wall of posters featuring photos of those held hostage by Hamas. Yeah, so unfortunately last month, those posters were spray painted and vandalized. Some of them were even torn down. Our Michael Rosenfield has more. Posters of the hostages spray painted and destroyed in March now back up and on full display. I wouldn't say it's a happy event, but it's, we want to have a very much of an upbeat that we're all here together, standing together to stand against anti-Semitism. Jeff Kosowski and his family had built the hostage wall on their private property in Newton after Hamas invaded Israel in October. He wanted to do something to honor the kidnapped men and women. He doesn't understand why anyone defaced the tribute to the innocent. I don't know how you could look at a hundred faces and just wipe them out. How any human could do that, no matter what your politics. Now the community has come together to rebuild the wall. I think it's really important to show the faces of the hostages because they're innocent people who are victims of terror and who are living regular lives just like you and me. Boston University student Ben Spira knows Hirsch Goldberg Paulin, one of the hostages. Hirsch is like unlike anyone you've ever met in your entire life. He's very respectful and he's very selfless. He's not a guy who cares a lot about like material things, but he's like very genuine and just wants to have a lot of fun. Community leaders hope the wall inspires other families to build similar tributes. Newton has been hit hard by anti-Semitic incidents in the last few months, with nearly 10 different crimes taking place, including rocks thrown through windows where pro-Israel signs were displayed. We're here to remind our community and the world that the hostages need to be front and center and that this isn't just a Jewish story, it's a human story. That was Michael Rosenfield reporting. Newton police say so far no arrests have been made. All right, first alert forecast for the eclipse as we go through our next hour or so. Still going on, 93% for Boston is the maximum eclipse. 329 is when that does occur. And then the moon will be off and we'll see the partial eclipse ending around 439. It's going to be quite the sight to see already occurring out there, but it's going to be, of course, best in totality. And that difference between 93 and 100% totality is quite a bit because the sky is not going to get completely dark. Good news, though, is that sky conditions in New England are looking gorgeous. So no matter where you are, if you have your glasses, uh, your safety glasses, it's going to be a great sight to see. Those temperatures today rising to the low 60s. As the moon passes in front of the sun, we'll likely see a dip in temperatures by about a degree or two, but then we'll be right back to it, warming things up throughout the afternoon and a middle to upper 60s if you are areas west. Now tomorrow, we'll see great sky conditions, cooler temperatures will be in the low 50s a little bit more of a sea breeze and if you're going to be spending your afternoon your Tuesday afternoon at Fenway for the home opener temperatures are going to be a little on the cooler side but it's still going to be a great day to get outside so those rain chances aren't coming into the picture until we get into Wednesday a 30% rain chance Wednesday Thursday and Friday we are watching those rain chances crank up a bit and we're going to see some clouds to start the weekend so we are getting into an unsettled pattern really the eclipse in the home opener opener couldn't be happening at a better time because we've been sandwiched in with cloudy skies and then those rain chances that are coming by the middle and end of the week. So Thursday morning showers are going to be in the forecast becoming a little bit more widespread as we go into the evening and then Friday. It's definitely looking like Friday is going to be the wettest day of the bunch. Even a few rumbles of thunder will be possible for Friday as temperatures on Friday are really going to be climbing. So Friday temperatures make their way to the middle 60s. We do have temperatures in the upper 
upper 50s sticking around as we go into Saturday and then low 60s for Sunday. Notice all the sunshine we'll see by the second half of the weekend and into much of next week. We're finally going to get that spring feel into the picture, but tomorrow 54 degrees because of that sea breeze staying in the low and middle 50s going into Wednesday as those rain chances do increase. Watching those rain chances closely for Thursday and Friday before we clear things out for the weekend. Saturday and Sunday looking great. We're getting close to patio season. We're not comfortably there yet. A next week though, it's tempting. It's definitely going to, we're getting there next weekend. It's just whether or not it's going to be staying that warm in the long run that we'll be keeping an eye on. Aftershocks from Friday's 4.8 magnitude earthquake are expected to continue across the Northeast this week. In fact, so far, there have already been at least 40 aftershocks. Take a look at this map. Each red dot represents an aftershock, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. Now, the strongest one being a 3.8 magnitude quake in New Jersey. There were no major reports of damage. Some progress to tell you about today. Cleanup of the key bridge collapse in Baltimore has entered its next phase. So over the weekend, crews started to move cargo containers off the ship that smashed into that bridge. Now, by clearing these containers, pieces of the bridge that were entangled with the cargo ship will eventually be able to be removed. The process is expected to take all week. The governor of Maryland says the goal is to reopen the port of Baltimore by the end of May. Spotify is launching a new feature involving AI. Your business news is coming up next. What makes a Medicare supplement insurance plan like an AARP Medicare supplement insurance plan from United Healthcare a good choice for people on Medicare? It's smart for you to have now. I'm 65. And later on, for the future you. I'm 70-ish. It's really smart. Hey, looking good. You made a great choice for us. With this type of plan, see any doctor or visit any hospital that accepts Medicare patients. There are no networks. Your healthcare future will have more freedom. I kept our doctor, and when I needed a specialist, no referrals needed, right? Bingo. In fact, see any doctor anywhere in the US. Really smart to have when you travel. When I visit this little cutie in Arizona, my plan goes with me. Grandkids, I can't wait. Don't worry about surprise medical bills either. You'll know up front about how much your care will cost. And knowing your expenses makes planning your financial future easier. I'm glad my husband and I can use our savings to do the things we want to do. I'm glad I don't have to shop for a new plan every year. That's right. Once you enroll, your coverage is guaranteed for as long as you keep this plan. Have questions? Call United Healthcare now to talk with a licensed insurance agent or producer. They know a lot about what makes these plans smart now and really smart later. Or just ask for this free guide. Benefits and rates in one place so it's easy to compare options. Year to year, 94% of members renew their plan. And Medicare supplement plans with the AARP name are the only Medicare supplement plans endorsed by AARP, meeting their high standards of service and quality. So give United Healthcare a call today and set yourself and your future self up with an AARP Medicare supplement plan from United Healthcare. <laughs> Winnie, look at you. Thanks again for looking out for me. Oh, we're in this together. An AARP Medicare supplement plan from United Healthcare. Smart now, really smart later. Now Biz 101, let's talk about Spirit Airlines saving cash by delaying new planes as well as furloughing pilots. So Spirit was set to receive new planes from Airbus by 2026, but now pushing back those deliveries by five years. And they plan to furlough about 260 pilots. The company's stock fell to all-time lows this year after its merger with JetBlue was blocked by a federal judge. Spotify is launching AI playlists that users can build and refine by saying things like less upbeat or more pop. This will first be available in the UK and Australia, then other countries in the future. You can also swipe to remove any songs from the playlist. Mark Zuckerberg is now richer than Elon Musk for the first time since 2020. Musk falling to fourth place on the Bloomberg Billionaires Index after Reuters reported Tesla canceled plans for a less expensive car, sending the stock lower. Musk denied that report. Zuckerberg added nearly $60 billion to his fortune as Meta's stock is at record highs. He now trails only LVMH CEO Bernard Arnold and Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. 
All right, another scare in the air to tell you about. Part of a Southwest Airlines plane peeled off as it was taking off in Denver. It's just the latest incident in a series of really unnerving events in recent months that are prompting federal agencies to investigate. Sam Brock has the latest. This morning, the FAA investigating this surreal sight that left passengers on board Southwest Flight 3695 terrified. Oh my God. Those on board witnessing the plane's cowling or metal covering that houses the engine appearing to peel off as the aircraft headed down the runway for takeoff. There goes. There's the, rest of it. the Boeing 737, scheduled to fly from Denver to Houston Sunday, had to turn back. Let's go ahead and declare an emergency for Southwest 3695. We got a piece of the engine cowling hanging off, apparently. Roughly 30 to 45 minutes later, the plane was back on the ground, and passenger Frank Sanger says he was surprised by what he saw upon deplaning. You can see the jet engine had a, a panel stripped away all the way around. The FAA issuing a statement saying in part, the pilot reported the engine cowling fell off during takeoff and struck the wing flap. The Boeing 737-800 was towed to the gate. The FAA will investigate. While the plane is manufactured by Boeing, the engine is not. It's unclear what caused the malfunction, but Southwest has recently experienced a series of runway scares, including a possible engine fire on Thursday that grounded a Vegas-bound flight in Lubbock, Texas. It also comes amidst sky-high scrutiny of the airline industry. United Airlines planes have had a number of safety issues, including eight incidents in two weeks. In a memo last month, United telling its employees the FAA would be growing its presence at the company. Meanwhile, Boeing is facing investigations from the Justice Department, NTSB, and FAA. After the Alaska Airlines door plug blowout led to questions of quality control breakdowns, their CEO announcing last month he's stepping down at the end of the year, but remaining on as the company makes changes. A startling new report from the TSA finds more than 300 people slipped past airport security in the last calendar year. Since March of 2023, more than 200 were found trying to enter through the exits. 80 people bypassed the TSA's podium where IDs are checked, but completed the rest of the security screening process. Former TSA Deputy Administrator John Halinski says it demonstrates a trend and any improvements would require more money. When I saw the number of about 200 breaches of exit lanes, that's something that could be mitigated. It goes back to the equation, where is your vulnerability in the airport? This has now become a vulnerability and you have to pay attention to it. The TSA noting most of these lapses aren't considered full security breaches and account for just 1 in 11 million passengers. Most are described as inadvertent and unintentional actions. With our wide selection of brand name appliances, finding what you want at State Street Discount is easy. A GE Top Freezer Refrigerator, $649, save 80 bucks. A loaded LG 65 inch OLED 4K Smart TV, $1599.99, save $900. And a stainless GE Electric Range, $799, save 100 bucks. We've been committed to personal service and great prices. Getting to know our customers so we can help you save, that's always been the best part of the job. State Street Discount, all you want. At Bank R.I., we're committed to a strong Rhode Island. And we're proud of the financial strength and trust we bring to our customers, to the communities of Rhode Island, and to companies and businesses all across the ocean state. Bank Rhode Island. Banking. Strong and trusted. I'm John Morgan. Today, I'm proud to announce that Morgan & Morgan is not only America's largest injury firm, we're also the only injury firm in the world with lawyers licensed in all 50 states. With over 900 dedicated attorneys and climbing, we're ready wherever you are, whatever you need. With over 35 years and billions and billions recovered for clients, three billion last year alone, we're everywhere for everyone. There's only one Morgan & Morgan for the people. Do you know someone who banks at Rockland Trust? Ask them why. Maybe they like that we've been around for over 115 years. 
120-something branches sounds pretty great, too. So does a free checking account with all sorts of benefits. But most likely, what really matters is Anna, Alex, Patrice. That one person who makes all the difference. Do you know someone who banks at Rockland Trust? Go ahead. Ask them. Weather on NECN is brought to you by your New England Ford dealers. All right, now time for your first alert weather. What a beautiful day and in time for the total solar eclipse. Could we have asked for a better day for this? I mean, it's almost like the clouds parted just for exactly. us to see the eclipse because we haven't you seen really the sun. Out. I know we haven't seen the sun in weeks. Such a like. stretch of overcast skies. And then on the other side of this, we have two days of sun. On the other side, there will be more cloudy skies and more rain chances. But today, it's looking gorgeous out there. We do have a few clouds coming into the picture, especially by the evening. But you're right, it is just like... Like it parted ways so that we could see this eclipse. Temperatures in the middle 60s by the time we're heading into our evening. And then we'll be watching those temperatures cooling overnight tonight. Tomorrow morning in the middle 40s, though. So if you're going to be traveling at all for uh, this eclipse getting back to where you need to be, or if you're just going to be hitting the roads in New England, it is looking good through your Tuesday. And most of Wednesday will be looking good as well. Wednesday, you might start to see a few rain chances here and there, but it doesn't look widespread. It's going to be Thursday when those rain chances do become a little more widespread and it doesn't really matter where you're going. Most of the East Coast is going to be seeing those rain chances coming into the picture for Thursday. Look at these 70s on the board. That's some good news. 76 for Syracuse. Starting to see those 70s even around the region. It's good news even though we're in the middle 60s going through our day today. So as we get around that eclipse time, once the moon completely comes over the sun. Well, we're not in totality. So when it comes 93% of the way in front of the sun, temperatures may drop by a degree or two, and that's going to be around 329. And then we'll watch it warm right back up as we go into our evening. So our next couple of days, we're going to see this calm pattern continuing. But on the other side of this high pressure, there will be another system that's going to come in and bring us more rain chances. So I'll time out those rain chances and how long the warmth lasts coming up next. Today could be a once in a lifetime experience for millions of people across the United yeah. States. Well, in one path, the total solar eclipse is passing over a large part of the country right now, like here in New England. It's this very particular yes. path, right? So it's providing folks who are in that path of totality this really spectacular view. Tom Costello has got more. Oh my God. <laughs> if you've ever experienced a total eclipse, Oh, look at the ray structure. It's something you never forget. What a great memory it is. Oh, my gosh. I've seen, like, a moon, the sun. In 2017, we watched from Charleston, South Carolina. It was just the most spectacular thing I've ever seen in my life. Did it live up to expectations? Absolutely. Amazing. Now the sun, the moon, and earth are again coming into alignment. And here's what's really cool. The sun's outer atmosphere, the corona, will briefly shine through. Those bubbling shooting streams of plasma are 400 times hotter than the sun itself. We don't really appreciate how much the sun is truly the lord of our solar system, how big on the sky it really is until you get to see that corona. The timing is perfect because right now the sun's 11-year cycle is near its peak, sending magnetic storms that can disrupt our power grids, communications, and satellites. And what we're trying to understand is space weather and that constant outflow from the sun of weather that affects us here on Earth and throughout the solar system. For NASA, a teaching moment. Viewing any part of the sun without protection, even for a short amount of time, can cause serious eye damage. 31 million people live within the path of totality. 150 million live within 200 miles. Newton Chu and his family have come to Indy from Hawaii. Since 1991, they've seen three eclipses. I think it's, it is a little emotional. I mean, there are people that, you know, you feel that sometimes a little tear in your eye that you're, you're witnessing just some phenomena of nature. Along the path, police expect highway gridlock. We were told to compare it to like uh, 30 Super Bowls letting out at the exact same time. Pennsylvania State Trooper Captain Kirk, yes, that's his real name, Captain Kirk Reese. Don't stop on the highway to view the eclipse. Don't stop in the roadways. Turn your headlights on. Be safe. 
And if you take any photos of the eclipse, please send them our way. Scan the QR code on your screen and keep the tab open so you can quickly submit any pics. You may see your images right here on air. Boston police investigating a stabbing in the back bay. Officers say one person was stabbed near Newbury and Gloucester Street late last night. Now, the victim was rushed to the hospital and is expected to survive. At this time, it's not clear if any arrests were made. A woman is in the hospital and a driver's in custody after a hit and run crash. This was in Beverly, Massachusetts last night. It was around 10 o'clock on Rantoul Street. The woman was flown to Boston with serious injuries. A short time later, a vehicle matching the description of the one that hit the woman was stopped in Essex. Police say the driver told officers he may have hit someone with his car. The man charged in connection with a suspicious death in Stowe is expected in court today. 20-year-old Shane Curry is facing assault and battery charges after his 17-year-old girlfriend was found dead inside his home Friday. Police say Curry wouldn't let them into the house, but after a few hours, they finally got inside and found the body of Navia Goddard. An autopsy is being conducted to determine her cause of death. Finding a home in Boston can really be a lot, but police say one local man made it even worse by ripping people off. So Bruno Ferreira faces multiple charges. He's accused of listing his apartment for rent on Facebook Marketplace, collecting deposits from potential tenants, but then never allowing them to move in and refusing to return their money. Police say the scheme took place during January and February. The 23-year-old is accused of collecting more than $10,000 from at least six potential tenants. Now to the latest on a suspected case of road rage in Hopkinton, Massachusetts. The 26-year-old woman who was hit has died. This is Destiny to cough, and her mother says her daughter died Saturday from complications during surgery. Prosecutors believe a driver hit to cough on purpose Thursday night. This man is now facing several charges. Now some political news decision 2024. So former President Donald Trump is clarifying his stance on abortion. In a video posted today, Trump said abortion laws should be left up to the states. He stopped short of endorsing the kinds of national abortion bans supported by some big name Republicans. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks or some will have more conservative than others. And that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or, in many cases, your religion or your faith. Do what's right for your family and do what's right for yourself. Do what's right for your children. Trump didn't say what he would do as president if Congress sent him a national ban. Massachusetts Governor Maura Healey releasing this statement, saying in part, Massachusetts is a beacon of reproductive freedom, and I will work every day to make sure abortion remains safe and legal. But one thing is clear, Donald Trump is a threat to the rights and health care of women in Massachusetts and across the country. President Biden is revealing a new plan to help cancel student debt for millions of Americans. It comes about a year after the Supreme Court blocked his first plan. The plan is more narrow this time, aimed at four groups of borrowers, those who owe more than they did at the start, those who have been paying for at least 20 years, those already eligible for forgiveness but haven't applied, and borrowers facing economic hardships. The Biden administration says this plan could bring the number of people who have had their debt forgiven to more than 30 million. A special ceremony in North Providence, Rhode Island yesterday to honor a group of U.S. veterans. In less than a month, they're getting a special honor flight called Forged in Fire. It'll take them down to Washington, D.C., where they'll get a chance to visit all the national monuments in tribute to the nation's armed forces. Members of the Rhode Island Fire Chiefs Honor Flight Hub are set to accompany the veterans to Washington. This is a profoundly uh, moving something that means a lot, I know, to every veteran who has gone through it. The group includes veterans ranging from World War II to Vietnam. Their flight takes off May 5th. It's the eve of the home opener, and the Red Sox are off to a surprisingly good start. We'll talk to Trenny Casey next in sports. Take that. There are many reasons to choose Medicare Advantage plans from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts, including our Medicare PPO Blue Saver RX plan with a $0 monthly premium and up to $1,000 in comprehensive dental benefits. And now there are 2,160 more reasons. Because with our new FlexCard, 
you get up to $2,160 in additional savings on an easy-to-use preloaded debit card on top of other benefits you already get, including $1,000 for over-the-counter items, $500 for fitness and weight loss programs, $600 additional dollars for dental, vision, and hearing, and up to $60 in rewards and incentives. Learn more by requesting your free Medicare guidebook today. From our extensive network of trusted doctors and hospitals to our top-rated member service, see why more people choose Blue Cross than any other Medicare plan in Massachusetts. Request your free 2024 Medicare guidebook now. Gear up for more in the year of 24 at the award-winning 24 Auto Group. This is our year, and we want to celebrate it with you. That's why we've got sales and service specials, giveaway contests and prizes, and fun family events happening all year long. So tune in every 24th of the month for the latest year of 24 news and offers. With 10 convenient locations across Massachusetts and Rhode Island and 8 top brands, we have the knack to save you more in the year of 24. Visit us in-store or online at 24autogroup.com. I'm with Beach Volleyball World Champions Sarah Hughes and Kelly Ching. Ching Ching for the Ching Ching. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. In a real way. Ladies, I look forward to seeing you in Paris. And I would love to get on the sand, do a little. Oh, I tripped there, you. Let's go. It's done. <laughs> ah, ah, I needed that. All right, time now for sports. I'm here with Trenny Casey from NBC Sports Boston. Let's start with Trevor's story. What's the story with the shortstop here? Because obviously his shoulder is injured. How's this going to affect things? It's going to be, uh, it's going to affect things a lot because you were really hoping on him not just for his bat, but also for his defense. And just, you know, have some consistency in the middle of the infield there. Now they're talking about. Vaughn Grissom when he finally comes back because he's also on the injured list. Maybe him coming back and shifting from second base to shortstop, but that's not his natural position. And then you have Pablo Reyes and Emmanuel Valdez. Like maybe they'll platoon at second base. And then there's even been suggestions of Sadon Rafaela moving from center field to shortstop, which is a position he can play, but he's a more natural center fielder. So you're kind of robbing from Peter to pay Paul. So you're taking away from a possible gold glove center fielder and putting him at short. It's just, it's, it's a bummer. They were really, I think, going to count on Trevor Story as a leader in the clubhouse. Somebody sort of solidified the lineup, solidified that defense, and then this happens. It's, I hate to compare him to Chris Sale because these injuries have all happened on the field, unlike Chris Sale, which was like riding a bike or walking down the street. But it's just terrible luck for Trevor Story in a huge contract. And such momentum going into yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, seven to three start, like so much better. I mean, if you would have told anyone that they were going to have a 700 winning percentage, going into opening day, we probably would have laughed at you. Right. Listen, do I still think that this is a playoff team? I'm not 100% sure that they can keep this going, but they do have some momentum. This definitely takes some air out of the balloon. All right, let's talk about women's college basketball. Obviously, Caitlin Clark losing yesterday, South Carolina winning. What do you think about that? I mean, it was a great game, right? I mean, the, the, the way that Iowa came out to start the game, Caitlin Clark, it felt like she was hitting every single shot she took, but she knew it was only a matter of time. South Carolina was undefeated and blowing their opponents out of the water. You knew it was only a little bit before they would sort of calm down and then dictate the pace, which they did. They really did a great job on defending Caitlin Clark in the second half, not allowing her to get those wide open threes. And even when she did have a couple of good looks, some she made, some she didn't. She had a much better first half than a second half. It's a bummer to not see Caitlin Clark, you know, win the national title. I, I think she's one of the greatest basketball players that women's co college basketball has ever seen. But let's not forget what Dawn Staley in South Carolina did. Wire to wire, undefeated team. They were, they are unbelievable. Um, Camila Cardoso, six foot seven, unbelievable presence on the court. They have stars of their own as well. It just was an all around great run for women's college basketball altogether. Now to the men's side. I really wish this game wasn't at 920 tonight oh. because I'm going to be so tired. But I am interested to see what happens. Obviously, UConn trying to be the national champs. Again, I'm also interested to see what happens with Zach Eddy. Yeah, I mean, per, I, I'm curious to see what happens if UConn actually plays a team that keeps things close. They've now won 11 straight tournament games by 
13 or more points. Like they kind of like South Carolina have just been blowing teams out of the water. But the funny thing is, I can name a player on Purdue. I can't, and maybe that's what makes UConn so great. There isn't one player that you're like, oh, he's you know like a, a future first. Well, Zach and he's kind of become a celebrity. He's become the celebrity, right? Like we know Kaylin Clark, we know Angel Reese, we right. know Camila Cardosa, and I'm like, ah, can I remember a guy's name on UConn other than their head coach Dan Hurley? But it doesn't matter. They've been so good. They're seven point favorites going into tonight. It's hard to see them not winning, but I think Purdue's going to give them a run for their money. What's your prediction though, ultimately? You think uh, UConn? I think UConn's going to be a back to back winner for the first That's time what I since think Florida too. did it. Sorry, Al Horford. I'm also biased <laughs> as a person from Connecticut. Yeah. All right, Trenny Casey, whatever. thank you for joining us. You got it. All right, first alert forecast for the eclipse as we go through our next hour or so. Still going on, 93% for Boston is the maximum eclipse. 329 is when that does occur. And then the moon will be off, and we'll see the partial eclipse ending around 439. It's going to be quite the sight to see already occurring out there, but it's going to be, of course, best in totality. And that difference between 93 and 100% totality is quite a bit because the sky is not going to get completely dark. Good news, though, is that sky conditions in New England are looking gorgeous. So no matter where you are, if you have your glasses, uh, your safety glasses, it's going to be a great sight to see. Those temperatures today rising to the low 60s. As the moon passes in front of the sun, we'll likely see a dip in temperatures by about a degree or two, but then we'll be right back to it, warming things up throughout the afternoon and a middle to upper 60s if you are areas west. And now tomorrow, we'll see great sky conditions, cooler temperatures will be in the low 50s a little bit more of a sea breeze and if you're going to be spending your afternoon your Tuesday afternoon at Fenway for the home opener temperatures are going to be a little on the cooler side but it's still going to be a great day to get outside so those rain chances aren't coming into the picture until we get into Wednesday a 30% rain chance Wednesday Thursday and Friday we are watching those rain chances crank up a bit and we're going to see some clouds to start the weekend so we are getting into an unsettled pattern really the eclipse in the home opener opener couldn't be happening at a better time because we've been sandwiched in with cloudy skies and then those rain chances that are coming by the middle and end of the week. So Thursday morning showers are going to be in the forecast becoming a little bit more widespread as we go into the evening and then Friday. It's definitely looking like Friday is going to be the wettest day of the bunch. Even a few rumbles of thunder will be possible for Friday as temperatures on Friday are really going to be climbing. So Friday temperatures make their way to the middle 60s. We do have temperatures in the upper Upper 50s sticking around as we go into Saturday and then low 60s for Sunday. Notice all the sunshine we'll see by the second half of the weekend and into much of next week. We're finally going to get that spring feel into the picture. But tomorrow, 54 degrees because of that sea breeze staying in the low and middle 50s going into Wednesday as those rain chances do increase. Watching those rain chances closely for Thursday and Friday before we clear things out for the weekend. Saturday and Sunday looking great. We're getting close to patio season. We're not comfortable there yet. Uh, next week, though, it's tempting. It's definitely going to, we're getting there next weekend. It's just whether or not it's going to be staying that warm in the long run that we'll be keeping an eye on. One of the nation's most important wildlife habitats could be at risk. Communities around Georgia's Okefenokee are locked in a battle over the environment versus the economy, and it could come to a head this week. Priya Sharitha reports from this natural wonder. Nestled along the Florida-Georgia border is the 438,000-acre Okefenokee Swamp, the largest blackwater swamp in North America. Here you can see alligators, bobcats, black bear, uh, river otters, all kinds of wildlife that you wouldn't be able to see in such a concentrated form in other places. Michael Lust manages all of it for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. There's an American bittern. And he believes this national treasure is under threat. What we're putting at risk is something that cannot be replaced. Under threat from a proposed mine set to be built almost three miles from the swamp. The mine is looking to draw up to 1.4 million gallons of water per day from two surrounding wells. Critics argue that water is critical for the famed swamp. It will affect the water levels in the swamp, could lead to increased drought, and that in turn could lead to increased wildfire. 
The Biden administration, a wide array of environmental groups, and celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio are all speaking out against the mine. The swamp's wildlife, cypress forests, and flooded prairies draw almost 400,000 visitors to the Okefenokee National Wildlife Refuge every year. Some locals fear that the proposed mine could hinder tourism and pose a risk to the swamp's fragile ecology. Charlene Carter runs a campground here. She thinks a mine nearby could hurt her business. They're coming here just for the wildlife refuge, and if they do this mining, we're not going to have that. But others who live in the small town of 4,000 say the mine could bring much needed good paying jobs and investment to this region. We're an impoverished community. I think this would bring high paying jobs with access to insurance, 401k, improve the standard of life of, of our citizens. Twin Pines Minerals, the Alabama company looking to build the mine, says mining won't affect the swamp, adding it will be conducted below the highest water levels of the Okefenokee. For the swamp to be drained, water would have to defy gravity and flow uphill. The Georgia Environmental Protection Division, which has final say, is so far siding with the mining company. They've already given it preliminary approval and final approval could come as early as next week. Unless environmentalists can convince them the risk to this wildlife wonder isn't worth it. It's beautiful, it's big, it's wild. We're doing absolutely everything we can to protect and manage this beautiful place for the American people. Priya Shreether, NBC News, the Okefenokee Wildlife Refuge. Olympic gold medalist Allie Raisman was back in town talking about her new children's book. The Nita, Massachusetts native talked to kids and signed copies of her new book, From My Head to My Toes. Her new book came out earlier this month that encourages kids to love their body and understand consent. Raisman says she hopes it'll help kids learn the importance of using their voice. I thought a lot about what I wish I knew when I was younger, and so I think that teaching kids what boundaries are and teaching kids about consent and teaching kids to trust their gut and their voice is really important. She's not competing in Paris this summer, but Raisman says she is looking forward to cheering on Team USA from the stands. There's electricity in the air at your New England Ford dealers, your electric vehicle headquarters, where you'll find the exciting Ford Lightning, the only EV that can say it's a Ford F-150, and the super quick Ford Mustang Mach-E with storage in the front and the back, along with a whole host of high-tech features. These EVs are in stock and ready for immediate delivery. The future is here, and its name is Ford. Now get 0% APR for 72 months plus 3,000 bonus cash, or at least for $3.99 a month for 36 months. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. If you've been injured in a car accident, call America's largest injury law firm. For over 35 years, my mission has been to deliver more for our clients, to deliver more for you. Morgan & Morgan, for the people. Hi, Right Window. The cat's hobby is looking out the window all day, but he needs your help. The problem, give, give him your squirrel face. Yeah, that one. He can't see a squirrel out an old cloudy window, and he hopes you see this. Look, look up, kitty. Our crystal clear triple pane window, $70 off installed with 0% financing. So call Right Window and, hey, cut it out. Oh, boy, call soon. He's got a new hobby. Call Right Window right now. A better window installed for the right price, Right Window. This is Monster Jam. As big as it gets. Coming to Gillette Stadium April 20th. Brought to you by BKT Tires, Great Clips, and Morgan & Morgan. You have to see it live, so lock in your seats today at MonsterJam.com. Hey, Massachusetts, the Powerball jackpot is over $1 billion in growing. Get in on the action with your favorite lottery app, jackpot.com. The easiest way to buy Powerball, Mega Millions, and official state lottery games right from your phone. And hey, now you get a free ticket with your first order. You choose your favorite lottery game, pick your lucky numbers, get a verified scan of your printed ticket to view on your phone. Get notified instantly when you win. Never miss another jackpot. Download the jackpot.com lottery app today. Use promo code jackpot and get a free lottery ticket with your first order. Time for your entertainment news now. Country music artist Morgan Wallen was arrested in Nashville Sunday night after he allegedly threw a chair from a rooftop bar. According to the arrest affidavit, Wallen was on the roof of Chief's Bar at about 10.45 p.m. when witnesses watched him pick up a chair, throw it off the roof, and laugh about it. 
Here's the thing, that rooftop bar sits six stories above busy Broadway Street. Two Nashville police officers said the chair landed three feet away from them. Officers spoke with bar staff and witnesses, reviewed security footage, which all confirmed Wallen's alleged actions. The affidavit states Wallen was arrested and booked. He's charged with three counts of reckless endangerment and one count of disorderly conduct. Who's ready? The knockout round. It begins tonight on The Voice. And Keith Urban talks about joining the show as a mega mentor to the contestants. Mark Barger has a preview. Keith Urban already has experience as a coach on Australia's version of The Voice. No! Oh, no. Are you serious? Now he gets to serve as a stateside mega mentor for Monday's start to the knockouts. I don't have to make any decisions. I don't have to break anyone's, crush anyone's dreams. I think you should do it in a higher key. LA lady, LA lady. Oh, but he is giving input to help the artists as they go head to head. Nothing, nothing, nothing on you, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. That's the part I love. I love being able to work one-on-one -on -one with artists like that um, and be able to help them in any way possible. The New Zealand native has an idea of what the contestants are going through. Because you can do runs all day long. You're like an Olympic skier, right? <laughs> it's so easy for you. I love that. Urban competed on an Australian TV show in the early 80s. I know what that feels like to be so exposed and vulnerable. Uh, and everybody handles that different. And when it comes to nerves... I think a little bit's good. Keeps you present. He reminds the artist that the show's audience has their back. They want you to be good. So they're already on your side. Um, in most cases, uh, not the clubs I grew up in, quite the opposite. Urban hopes that his guidance... I'd always go to the story, the story, the story. ...can help position the singers for their best shot to advance for the playoff round. I just want everyone to be the best they can be. Their next chance starts Monday night. Mark Barker, NBC News. All right, do you ever feel like your dog understands you a little too much? Well, you're not wrong. That's because they can. A new study, at least, finds that, like humans, dogs have the capacity to link words to mental images or ideas in their minds. So researchers had dog owners show their pets toys while playing recordings referencing each one. And sometimes the words spoken would match the toy. Other times they were different. So they recorded the dog's brain activity, which reacted differently to mismatched pairings, signaling some level of understanding. I think for those of us who've ever had a dog, you know this, right? There are certain toys that they know. Oh, yeah, they know. They know. That this goes with that. Yeah, like right. Pavlog's dog. They know when they hear the ringing or whatever. They know what's coming next. That's the one they want. All right, that does it for us here on Boston News Daily. I'm Melody Mendez. And I'm Darren Batello. Have a great rest of your day. someone and understand their story sometimes all you need to do is make that extra connection and just be there if you have this and you get this you could end up with this unexpected out-of-pocket costs which for those on Medicare or soon to be is a good reason to take charge of your health care so consider this, an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan from United Healthcare. Why? Because Medicare alone doesn't pay for everything. And what it doesn't pay for, like deductibles and co-pays, could really add up, even thousands of dollars a year. Medicare Supplement Plans help by paying some of what Medicare doesn't and making your out-of-pocket costs a lot more predictable. Call United Healthcare today and ask for your free decision guide. Learn more about plan options and rates to fit your needs. Now, if you like this, greater freedom, you'll love that Medicare supplement plans have no networks and no referrals needed. See any doctor, any specialist, anywhere in the U.S., as long as they accept Medicare patients. These types of plans also give you more flexibility when traveling in the U.S. 
your plan goes with you anywhere you go in the country. Even better, these are the only plans of their kind endorsed by AARP. Call United Healthcare today for your free decision guide. So if you have this and want less out of pocket costs and more peace of mind, consider adding this an AARP Medicare supplement plan. Take charge of your health care today. Just use this or this to call United Healthcare about an AARP Medicare supplement plan. Got it! Hey, what's up? It's Tom Curran from Quick Slants over on NBC Sports Boston. Yeah, we're not only on NBC Sports Boston. You can catch us on NBC 10. We parachute in anytime there's breaking news. News worthy of you. Thanks so much for joining us here on NECN. I'm Melody Mendez. It is Monday, April 8th. Let's get you caught up on today's top stories. It is total eclipse day across the country. Many people, millions in fact, flocking to the best viewing locations to see the moon block out the sun. The path of totality cuts across more than a dozen states, including New Hampshire, Maine, and Vermont, where highways have seen a lot more traffic than usual this morning. A man in Brockton, Massachusetts, accused of running over another man twice and killing him. Police say the driver then got out of his car and beat the victim with a brick. That driver was arrested on the scene and is due in court today. President Biden revealing a new plan to help eliminate student debt. The plan is aimed at four groups of borrowers, including those who owe more money than they did at the start and those who've been paying for at least 20 years. The Biden administration says this plan could bring the number of people who have had their debt forgiven to more than 30 million. Hey there, happy Monday, happy Eclipse Day. We've been talking about this forever, it seems like. So in Boston, we're going to see something a little bit different than the path of totality. We've been talking about that a lot, but most of us may not be able to get to the path of totality. It's still going to be really cool, and you need the eye protection the whole time. So at 2.16 today is when that partial eclipse begins. Then we go to the maximum eclipse at 3.29, and this is what we will experience in Boston. And for much of the Northeast, uh, beautiful, you see a crowd crescent of the sun. Partial eclipse ends at 439 today and then we go on with our day. But you never want to look at the sun without the protective eyewear or even make that pinhole projector. Or you could even just use a colander and project the sun, have it behind you and look on the ground and you can see the eclipse using a colander. You'll see it actually copied, uh, you know, about 50 times on the ground. Uh, as we look in the path of totality, this is where you have full darkness for that few minutes of time. 